greatest chess minds in the world have arrived in Germany, where the historic city of Munich will host the second leg of the FIDA Women's Grand Prix. Former world champions, rising stars and the finest players of their continents will fight for a total prize pool of 80,000 euros. Local fans will be cheering for two home heroes on show, Elisabeth Petz and Inara Wagner, both looking to win the title for the host nation. Join our live show every day between the 2nd and 13th of February from 3 p.m. Central European time. Your hosts for today are Grandmaster Stefan Kinderman and Women International Master Veronica Exler. Hello, welcome to the seventh round of the FIDE Women Grand Prix here in Munich. <laughs> and again, I have Grandmaster Stefan Kindermann <laughs> next to me. And we have Veronika Exler, International Master from Austria. Looking forward to have a great commentary um, time together with you. Yeah, yesterday it was kind of a little bit boring because there were only draws, so no changes in the ranking. But let's still have a look on the results from yesterday. Yeah, as you can see, only draws were made. Dinara against Hampi, Chinna against Nana, Aline against Anna, Elisabeth against Maria, Alexandra against Sansaya, Shongi against Harika. Yeah, only draws, so the ranking is still the same, but let's have a quick look. Alexandra Kosteniuk is still leading, now with five points. Then we have Hampi, Nana and we have uh, three and a half points. Then we have Alina, Anna, Tronavani, Maria, Shangi, and Elizabeth with three points. So many players with three points. So everything is possible here. And then we have Shina with two and a half, Sansaya with two, and Dinara with one and a half. So what to expect from today's round? Hopefully big fights between Harika will fight against Dinara, Sansaya will fight against Shongi. Maria will fight against Alexandra, Anna will fight against Elisabeth, Nana will fight against Alina, and Humpy will fight against Jinna. So, Stefan, what do you think from today's game? Yeah, there are lots of interesting games. Personally, I'm most curious about the game with um, Alexandra, with Black against um, Maria, because I'm very curious in what way Maria will attack the leader. Because if she or anyone else wants to have a chance, of course, they must try to defeat Alexandra. Or whether they say Alexandra is in such good form, there's nothing to do. Let's better take some very cautious approach. Yeah, we will see. It will be very interesting, that for sure. So let's start with the games, I would say. Ah, yeah, here the first game that we see is between Hampi Conera on the white side against Shu Jina. So let's just quickly go through the opening after this very classical start here. White basically has this big choice between either as played knight to f3 or knight to c3, allowing the, the Nimso Indian, or also very fashionable to play the Catalan opening. Here knight f3. Nowadays um, black here usually plays d5 in most cases. There are other options as well, of course. And now it's interesting, as usually in this uh, position, White nearly always plays the knight to c3. But in this case, um, White played bishop to g5. This is an interesting move order. And I guess it might be uh, designed against the extremely favorable uh, Ragosin variation of the knight c3, bishop b4 which is played very much now in top chess and usually gives black quite an active game. And here already the idea is shown. Um, sorry, wait a moment. Ah, we transposed, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> no, we I have thought, I thought, Yeah, we have, because I thought the idea might have been, for example, to play the knight to d2. This would be some, uh, some other wrinkle. Mm -hmm. But okay, now we transpose to this, as I said, very popular Ragosin. Yeah, this is one of the more solid lines of the Ragosin. White plays e3. Black does have the pair of bishops, but white has the somewhat better development. In some cases, has the chance after some preparation to advance with e4. So I think you played this with black. Yeah, yeah, Erika. yeah. I played so a lot of black. you know everything black. about it. <laughs> <laughs> of course, everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yesterday we saw something similar here. 
It was a game between Dinara and Humpy. So very interesting. Now Humpy with the other color. And there we saw Bishop H4 line. Yeah, and this was this very interesting thing also with G5. But it was of course a little bit different. I just want to show now. Here we have this typical line here. And before we saw this idea with uh, E3 and uh, Knight E2 that was mm -hmm. from yesterday. Yeah. But she decided to take, which is also a very typical line. Yeah, and E3, yeah, so far everything just yeah, normal this, moves. Well, here I would expect a relatively calm game, with maybe white is fighting for a very small advantage. But as far as I know, that usually black is um, very well keeping its own. Mm -hmm. see, but maybe let's take a look at the other games. Maybe there's even some even more exciting stuff. Yeah, this is typical. Ragusina, I'm mm -hmm. also playing it. So, uh, what do we have here? Oh, the fantasy variation of the Karokan. Oh, <laughs> nice, another yeah. Karokan. I'm so happy. All of a yeah. sudden, everyone is playing Karokan. <laughs> yeah, so already yesterday we had two very interesting Karokan games. And now here we have on the white side um, Shan Sansaya Abdul Malik against Tan Shongshi. And let's see how it started with the now again relatively fashionable Karo Khan. Well, we had yesterday, for example, the very crazy game of um, Alexandra Kostenyuk with white. And also Tsansaya played Karo Khan with black yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. So they switch also switched sides now. And she plays this move F3. This is the this is the so-called fantasy variation of the Karo Khan, which can lead to extremely sharp positions, at least if both side sides want so. And um, yeah, I mean, black has many approaches, the taking on e4 and e5 is very principled, but I seem to think it's also considered to be a bit risky for black. Do you know this line with black, or which line do you play against the fantasy variation? I play another line, yeah. Here, fantasy like variation in a way is very principled. White is keeping the tension here and wants to retake with the pawn here to keep his, or her in this case, beautiful pawn center. But it comes at a price, because this move, of course, uh, hampers development. And what do you play against the fantasy variation? Well, I'm, uh, as a just uh, newcomer to the Karo Khan, I guess, as many others with little time, I'm following a repertoire, um, um, a repertoire book or also chess course on chessable uh, of very high quality um, by Christoph Siletsky, who is a quite well-known theoretician on this. There's one um, course called Keep It Simple with Black. And of course, Keep It Simple, this was very tempting for me with very little time. <laughs> 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 and as far as I remember, he recommends the move order with Queen B6, yeah. which is quite an interesting This move. is also my line. Mm -hmm. And after Knight C3, now to take in, take in E4 and play E5 as mm -hmm. far as I remember. Yeah, exactly my line. Yeah, I'm playing this line with black already mm -hmm. since I'm a little child, so I never changed mm -hmm. here. Also fantasy variation, uh, you don't meet so often with black. And here he recommends a very uh, funny move. In this position, was, as far as I know, is considered to be crucial. Now, do you know what is the recommended move here by Christoph Siletsky? Which already was used, even though it looks uh, quite crazy, by, uh, mm, by uh, German super talent Vincent Keimer with black successfully. A crazy move. My move is just a normal move, so I'm not sure mm. what you think. No, the move is also the engine likes uh, like like it a lot. Is it bishop? Okay. <laughs> H. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I'm not playing this line <laughs> with H5, but interesting. Yeah, yeah? Interesting move. I will have a look at it. It's the idea of the bishop e2 to play bishop g4. Giving black quite an active game. Mm-hmm. Okay, good okay. to know. But let's not deviate too far from the game, I think, because this is, um, and e5, this is um, also very logical, because taking on e5 um, basically also would be a blunder, I guess, due to queen h4 check. And white does have small problems. <laughs> 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 but of course, white plays knight f3, this is the idea. And now there would be very sharp lines if black now takes here, as far as I remember, white plays bishop c4. This is like in some old Gambit game and getting very speedy development and this is considered to be very dangerous for black. So for this reason here, in this case, black played bishop g4, white plays 
um, uh, bishop c4. Now, for example, if black would take here on d4, then probably white could play bishop takes f7 check and a knight e5 check, which um, is nothing that black wants to see. So black continues um, knight d7, normal move here, strengthening the point on e5. Short castle. Now black, of course, has to be very um, cautious. Some attacks on f7, so knight f6. And now is the moment for white to stabilize her center. Bishop d6. Yes, I think this line is known. I think it's considered to be playable for black, although being a bit risky, if I remember. I don't know. I think white will play something like um, either bishop e3 or maybe bishop g5. Knight to d2. Ah, sorry. Mouse slip. Fortunately, not disastrous here. But somehow this mouse here is not extreme. Yeah, well, later knight to d2, and then in the right moment to switch the queen to the king side. Mm. And I think it's considered to be a bit dangerous for black, but I'm not, not totally sure. At least for me, it's dangerous. <laughs> I don't like it so much if my opponent is attacking me with <laughs> the open f file. Yeah, sometimes there can be also the idea of the queen e1 um, to attack with knight h4, knight f5, and so there. Yeah. I think it looks a bit more attractive for white. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, I guess that Tan Shong Shi is well prepared. So. But it will be an interesting game for sure. Yeah, nice to see so much Kao Kan now. So what happened in the between uh, in the game between Tronavali and Dinara? So this so far is a um, Rete opening. Here many things can happen by transposition. And this now the next white move is a bit of a surprise because normally um, the consensus is here that white should play d4 if fighting for an advantage here, because by um, castling here. It gives black the, the opportunity to play King's Indian defense with colors reversed. By the way, also a black nice repertoire um, recommendation of Christoph Siletsky in his book uh, Keep It Simple for Black. Um, and this is considered to be very nice for black here because white doesn't succeed to prove in this line that his tempo up in the King's Indian reversed um, is worth anything. So it's a bit of a surprise that black didn't play this, but knight f6, because now again white gets the option to play d4. But here Harika shows that she's not up for any kind of theoretical battle, but she just wants to play a calm game. I mean, still e5 possible, but of course also g6 is a very solid opening. It's like a g3 set up against the king's Indian. And theoretically speaking, black is fully okay. But it's a game beyond theory usually or be beyond um, very well trodden theory. So it will be interesting also. So something you would like? Mm, well, I think nowadays I would even prefer it on the black side. But I mean, also with white, it's a playable game. I mean, it's I think I also played it with white and some many years ago. OK, but I want to come to the game where I'm most looking forward <laughs> 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 of Maria Ale against Alexandra. Ah, this is a classical um, Italian Gioco Piano, where many years, ag many years, some ten years ago, I produced a video about this, which was very successful. But of course, since then, after I produced this video for Chess Base, of course, the um, lots and lots of developments have happened, and the Italian game was for when I, when I published this um, video, it was still uh, considered that. Um, that only bishop b5 poses black, poses black real problems. But since then, the Italian game has established to be of about equal value. And many, many ideas and finesses have been um, discovered. But still, till today, especially also for amateurs with little time, it's an attractive opening system for white because you can learn the basic setups and ideas very quickly. And does not you can use it without a vast body of theory. But of course, if you want to play it on top level, against professionals, then you also have to work very hard nowadays. And all the time new ideas emerge. And the problem being to learn this, that many of the positions look very, very similar. And there are uh, seemingly only small details that are different. 
but they can make a very big difference if you don't understand it properly. So this is the typical setup in this um, modern Roy Lopez. And here, um, yeah, the next move H3 is to, uh, because the normal main move is C3. This is a very important um, cornerstone of the white strategy here, preparing in some cases later on to play um, D4, but also securing the square D4, in some cases B4. But here black does have the option to play the active move D5, which is nowadays considered to give black um, quite good play. It's also a gambit line, white can win a pawn later by attacking E5, but it comes at a price and it seems that black gets quite good counterplay. And so H3, uh, because also H3 usually has to be played by white, Normally it's played a bit later, but here is the idea to keep the square c3 in some cases for the white knight and to make this push d5 less attractive. But Alexandra played it anyway and as far as I know it's also pretty playable. Yeah, now the next move, this is one of the recent developments, this um, bishop to e6, it looks a bit strange, but one of the points being that now um, the pawn on e5 um, at least it's not attractive for white because black can take and and after knight e5 and now at least if white uh, would retake with the rook this is a mistake because black has queen f6 check and so this is so to say indirectly defended and um, also for some reasons uh, this um, move knight h5 isn't very attractive I think the main reason being that it's not really a threat to taking e6 because after knight takes e s um, f takes e6 there will be some strong pressure against f2 so that's not ad advisable for white and and in case um, yeah white plays here c3 and in many cases uh, don't know the theory but in some moment black just plays f6 here I'm not absolutely sure if it's here and if white goes d4 which of course would be the desirable push and now white takes in e5, then um, also maybe to take with the knight, I'm not absolutely sure, just to show the basic ideas. And again, at first sight the structure looks nice for white, but on the other hand, out of a sudden, black does have strong pressure on the f-line, and some moment the queen may join the attack, so this is quite um, dangerous for white. Yeah, but I guess this is still serious, so some theoretical battle is ahead. Ah, a5 is an interesting move. This I didn't see before. Well, one hand, of course, it's a prophylactic move against b4, which in some cases can be quite good for white. And it basically says, rightly so, that taking on e5 still is not um, possible, or at least not attractive, because this trick was um, bishop f2. And obviously, she also isn't uh, still isn't afraid of this knight g5 move because as I said it's it looks nice to take the black bishop but opening up the, the f line might be very dangerous so now white has to decide and um, for example one normal move would be knight knight to d2 although this might have to draw back in some cases that black has the option to play knight f4 hitting d3 oh, but maybe this is not so dangerous because white can go knight to e4 but Okay, but this is can very get very sharp now. And if Maria doesn't know this stuff, didn't see this before, then now over the board, this will for sure take some time to decide what's the right way to go. But it seems that she knows a lot about it. She has still one hour, 32 minutes left. So she is still in preparation. Yeah, but after move A5, I'm not so sure about this then. This move I didn't see before. So maybe this is a new idea then. I think now white has to decide, I mean, for sure not to take in e5, but um, knight g5 still doesn't look too too attractive to me. I mean, the question being knight, knight d2 to, uh, with the plan to jump to e4 looks normal. Hmm. Sorry. Ah, just let's play the move. And here's the question whether black has some concrete countermeasures, whether knight, a4 work, knight f4 works for black or what's the black idea. Because otherwise white plays knight to e4 and then um, 
either transfers the knight to g5 or sometimes to g3. And then black has to show her hand. Okay, but hard to say if you don't know the concrete line. I mean, at least a5 I never saw. Okay, so let's move on. We have the game between Anna and Elisabeth. Some Sicilian defense again. Oh yeah, this is a very <coughs> this is a very fashionable line of the famous knight operation, which is still after many many decades considered to be one of the absolutely high class openings for black. I mean, it's interesting. I read an interview with a correspondence chess grandmaster, and for them, of course, it's very important to play high class openings, especially after discoveries of um, the artificial intelligence AlphaGo Zero, and for black against e4, there are only very few defenses left that are playable if you play against somebody with com computer engine help of um, artificial intelligence. And if I remember right, there are only very few lines of all. Um, for example, let's say openings like the Pirtz defense or um, Scandinavian or so, they are absolutely refuted according to this. Um, Karo Khan is just on the verge of being playable. <laughs> <laughs> <Good> Sorry, <news. laughs> French defense, very sad news for me, is basically uh, refuted. Uh, already, uh, lost. <laughs> already lost. Already <laughs> lost. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, inside the Sicilian, one of the lines that is still playable is the Nidorf here, that we see here uh, characterized by this move A6. Of course, the Berlin defense is one of the few openings. I think open Spanish is just about being about playable. And um, yeah, and in the Sicilian defense, also Sveshnikov is considered to be playable, and I think Taimon of Sicilian. But that's, that's all. And against um, first move d4? Um, this I don't know, but I know that the artificial intelligence, there's a very, uh, really great book by Matthew Sadler, who also analyzes these games. The name title is Game Changer, analyzes the strategies and what we can learn from it from AlphaGo Zero. Um, the artificial intelligence, and this is good news for you, played exclusively the Ragosin defense, if possible. <laughs> <laughs> All my <laughs> openings, see, <laughs> I don't have any problems. I play Karukan, I play Ragosin, and I even played Berlin defense against Spanish. Yeah, but I think uh, the, the artificial intelligence itself uh, never played Karukan. And, um <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> But I think also, yeah, okay, but let's come back to this night off, which is absolutely high class opening and was a favorite weapon of lots of, of uh, world champions. Was the absolute favorite weapon of Bobby Fischer, of Gary Kasparov. Um, later, well, um, I think Carlsen doesn't play it so much, but, but of many, many top grandmasters till today. And what about you? No, night off was too theoretical for me because to play night off with black successfully. You have at first to work for many months and um, don't do anything else and, and it changes all the time. Because nowadays, in the, in, in the old times, there were only the moves bishop g5, a sharp move was bishop c4. You have to learn bishop e2, maybe bishop e3. But nowadays you even have to take serious moves like rook, like rook g1. You have to know uh, even crazy moves like h4, bishop d3. Um, <laughs> and if you're not well prepared, it's extremely dangerous. But f3 is one of the sharpest lines. It initiates the so-called so called English attack. This is English attack is called the setup with f3, bishop e3, in most cases preparing long castle. And now also the next move would have been considered some decades ago to be totally crazy. Black plays in early stage h5 himself, even though black mostly will play the short castle later. So now uh, some decades before you would say this is totally crazy and impossible. But it has turned out that this attacking plan was white g4, which is the typical plan here in the classical English attack, is so strong that it's worthwhile to play such a move like h5, just a prophylactic measure against the white g4, even though it costs the tempo, and even though if you will castle short, in many cases um, this pawn on h5 will be very strange than an attacking target. But it has turned out that this is a very um, solid and reliable line for black, as far as I know. I don't play it neither with white nor with black, so excuse me. So this is the typical setup of black pieces. And here also the next jump, I think, is one of the main moves here, knight to d5. This initiates now a uh, change of structure. Black changes the knight. Now the structure has changed. Now white in the long run has also the, the idea to attack on the queen side, although 
Um, he won't do it so soon, especially if he does the long castle and black later on in the right moment can initiate counterplay in the center or try to play here on the in some way on the C-line. But it's very concrete and very far analyzed. So, But both Anna and Elisabeth, they are both very well prepared, usually theoretical, so I'm sure they know their stuff. G6, this development of the bishop, of course, is more active than going to um, E7. This is a typical prophylactic move. The king is just uh, more safe on B1 than on C1. And now, yeah, this is interesting now. Rook G1. I don't know whether this is still mainline theory. Well, white intention is clear. <laughs> 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 Wants to prepare uh, anyway this push G4. Still now it comes a bit after the price because if white uh, plays G4 after changing, then probably in this case, is, I guess, black will not play the short castle, but maybe keep the king in the center or maybe play the long castle because then black gets the option to open up the H-line. On the other hand, it's interesting because now black has to show her hand. Yeah, maybe the main had to make the short castle unattractive. Maybe white doesn't really want to play G4, um, but only if black plays the short castle. I guess if black would now play the long castle, then white absolutely would change plans and would not play G4. But then maybe attack with c4, rook c1, c5, something like this then. Mm -hmm. Although it must be said that in any moment black can play knight c5. And this again would uh, create um, probably a change of structure when white changes and gets a, a passer on d5. What would you play with black right now? Oh, this is a tough question because I absolutely, <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely <laughs> don't know the finesses of this line. Ooh. I would go for rook c8 and wait with castling. But what's the next move? I have no idea. Yeah, yeah this is because, because after rook c8, it's it's compromising because then you will never castle long again. If oh, I never wanted to castle long. Ah, okay. When if white, let's say, plays c4 now, then. Oh, still? Okay. No, ah, why not? Then? Well, maybe in this and, in, and the other drawback is you cannot play a5 anymore because now you would like very much to play a5, a4. That's also a drawback of rook c8. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> About rook c8, I don't know. It's um, well yeah. one typical problem if black goes b5, which would not a typical move. This is dangerous uh, yes. strategically because here the square will become weak. That's my problem because I'm um, used from Sicilian that you play b5 with black and then start attacking. But here in this position, you have knight a5 and knight c6. Well, I mean, a principled move would be maybe knight to b6. If it works, or uh, maybe white has queen a5, sorry. Yes. No, although this is maybe not then knight fd7, so this maybe was hitting this one, but I'm also not very convinced here. Because white does have to move queen a5, and I don't know, maybe it works because now we have, now we have rook c8. Hitting c2. And now having the idea, um, knight takes d5. Well, hard to say. It's very concrete. And but also, I don't like. I don't really like knight b6. Uh, knight to b6. I just want to show the options for black. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what would I play here? Um, probably would think for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Lose some <on> time. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Never made any move. <laughs> But it's really hard if you if you're not if you did not study this um, in depth, then it's very difficult to find the right ideas here. Yeah, for me it's really complicated to see what Black's next move. Yeah, maybe Rook G one is quite clever. Uh, quite clever, just um, just wait, yeah. Just wait what Black is doing, hmm. and um, and react. Then maybe A five, but uh, A five is always interesting. But Bishop B five. Yeah, bishop b5, but um, still a4 and making some progress on the queen side. Okay, so maybe I start with a4 and then bishop b5. I'm not so sure, but now you always have this weakness mm -hmm. on b5. Yeah, yeah no, this and is. And I stopped mm -hmm. you. Yeah, because when I'm s uh, when I'm uncastled, then probably still knight c5 is no good because of the check and also of the changing why this got this d pawn and so this is um yeah interesting 
Ah, uh, what would I play here? Maybe should anyway play short castle, but um, ah well, long castle of course is the principled um, principled alternative. But okay, let's try this and then c4. But also here, I don't see black's idea. Or no white, it's easy. Yeah, no one in some moment to jump into c5. So right now. Okay, I must admit I also don't like it too much, but <laughs> 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 Engine also mm. doesn't like it. <laughs> Maybe Black must be brave and play the short castle anyway, but mm -hmm. and then attack with A5 somehow then. I don't know, but I would like the white position, what can I say altogether? I would if I have the choice, uh, I definitely uh, would take white. But yes. I know there are lots, what does the engine say? Well it's just some slight white advantage. Yeah, I'm really curious what is the best black plan here. Hmm. So let's wait so what they will play. This is something for the Knight of Specialists. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we have the game between oh. Nana and Alina. Oh, a King's Indian. This is very brave because um, this shows that Alina is ready to go all in because the King's Indian is a fascinating opening. I think we discussed about it some rounds ago. That it's there are many King's Indian addicts around, and I was one of them some years ago in my professional career, because you can win such beautiful games games with the King's Indian, and forget about the ones um, when your Black Bishop is a dead piece of wood and you lose terribly in a positional way. <laughs> <laughs> and again, we have this idea with e3. Yeah, this very fashionable system, and late not not really um, meant as an attacking gesture, but later on to. Um, as a prophylactic measure against black move f5 in some in many lines. Yeah, the set up with bishop e3 combined with h3 in some way, sometimes with knight f3, sometimes without. This is very fashionable. Yeah, white closes the center. Knight a6, this is typical flexible development because it leaves the the bishop diagonal open and the knight is heading for c5, <coughs> making pressure on e4. Knight has to protect, of course, the pawn in e4, and now is threatening with, <coughs> with b4. Sorry, a bit sore throat today. <coughs> Yeah, I think this must be quite <coughs> quite well known line. I played this position with white but not h3. Instead I already castled. Ah okay. Well typical <coughs> typical black move here is to play c6. Yeah, and white wants to go for b4 someone, but it's not so easy. You need to prepare this. Well, it depends if white plays long, so white plays long or short castle. I think short castle is not so attractive. I think now black, maybe first to change here, maybe not. We'll now proceed with the typical plan. Mm -hmm. And white will be a bit unhappy about this move h3. Yeah, that's why I was playing it with castling and then f3 and mm -hmm. not h3. But this is just another line, so... Both is possible, of course. Yeah, and if white plays the long castle, which is more typical, I think, for this setup with h3, and black can maybe not take, or maybe even first play a4. Or a4, I don't know, because taking in c5 and c6. Maybe take and, and play a4. And then put later, later a or f rook to the c line and trying to create uh, some counterplay against the white king. On the other hand, white has got some squares here. So this is very sharp. And positionally very risky for black if it goes wrong. As I said, you are getting totally crushed. So here also you have to know your stuff extremely well. 
and also in my King's Indian Times, and this was already some 20 years ago, there were so many ideas for white, and you had to, uh, against every idea you had to react extremely precisely. And if you were not extremely precise, then you got it to an extremely bad position. So this is it's very challenging to play King's Indian with black. Okay, this is we already through here, yes. Okay. Okay, quick. We also movie. have mm -hmm. some other games we didn't check yet, I think. Oh, we have another game, sorry. I'm not 100% sure, just want to be sure right now. Okay, we saw this game. Okay, yeah, we Or already checked every yeah, game. Wow, mm -hmm. today we were so mm. fast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not used to this. Usually you're so fascinated by one game <laughs> <laughs> that we are not <laughs> able to see <laughs> all of the games before the <laughs> first break. So we can have a second round right now. Mm -hmm. Nice. So okay, what, happened? what happened in a game between Humpy and China? So here we had this opening with the Ragusin and then E3. Take, take, c5, mm -hmm. okay, everything is typical. Take, knight e4. Okay. Oh yeah, recently there's a beautiful, there was a beautiful game of, of Arnish Giri with white pieces with this strange looking idea, rook c1, c2. You won a brilliant game in why can't see it, it's because I commented it from a newspaper column. In this opening? Mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah, it was for sure in this opening. I don't know whether it was exactly this line, but I remember the strange looking maneuver, rook c1, c2. And what's the idea behind this move? That later black black put up somehow some position with bishop b6, knight c6, something like this. And surprisingly white was doubling on the e line later, or while he put the look, of course not now, but when the bishop is gone. Um, and out of the sudden white uh, created an extremely strong king's, uh, king's side attack some threats of knight g5 and sacrificing on... Yeah, I think black put the bishop to c6. And uh, out of the sudden there was an extremely strong um, kingside attack with knight g5 and sacrifices in e6 coming when the rooks were doubled here. This was absolute brilliancy by, by Anish Giri. But, um, ah yeah, he already switched to... Um, but I think this already is mm. new rook mm. c8. Rook c8. And the idea being that um, in this in this moment, um, just to show it, Bishop A2. Bishop B5. It's no good because of Bishop B5. So this is an interesting idea. But anyway, now this, these um, po um, isolated pawn positions can be very tricky for black because if white opens up here with D5, then... Um, and I don't know whether I like this move rook C8 because, let's say, white plays... Queen D3, yeah, for queen example. D3 because I uh, anyway mm -hmm. want to play bishop A2, B1. Yeah, exactly. This is a very nice plan. Yeah, typical Building idea with isolated mm -hmm, pawn. You know, Building up a battery and then black will regret his, uh, her move A6. Mm -hmm. And also D5 will be a threat. I think that rook C8 is too slow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't like rook C8 at all. I think already black has a bad position. And also I think the engine, yeah, the engine agrees. Yeah. Although the engine uses to overestimate the over, <laughs> sorry, my English today is to overestimate <laughs> <laughs> the chances, <laughs> <laughs> the chances of a <laughs> of an isolated pawn. Beautiful pronunciation. Oh, thanks, thanks. Um, um, yeah, this looks very attractive for white. I think mainly this, this idea d5, but also this plan mentioned by Veronica, bishop a2, b1. Mm. It's uncomfortable for black. Let's okay. Let's just try if black goes knight c6 and then we go d5. I guess. Oh, horrible! Because if black um, takes, then probably already knight knight to g5 is already crushing. Oh. Is the queen attacked and threatening <coughs> threatening mate mate on h7? Really a nice idea with rook c2 and mm -hmm. rook yeah, yeah. e2. Yeah, yeah, I saw it first in this Anish game. And uh, if you have the chance to look it up, this recent game from Anish Giri from Why Can't Say. This was really, I, I think it was against Duda, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, this was really beautiful. 
no good news for my Rago scene. So I need to do some research. At least this is one of the few problems I don't have <laughs> <laughs> in chess <laughs> and in life <laughs> because I don't play the Rago scene. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> yeah, as I only convince already convinced you. to uh, succeeded to convince me about other openings. <laughs> okay, let's go on with our. Yes, with the next game. So here it's a slight advantage for Humpy. Easier to play, Rook C8. I think it's even maybe even more than slight advantage. A big one? Yeah, I think so. Okay, a big one. <laughs> <laughs> According to Stefan. Yeah, here we have the game between Sansaya and Shungi. What happened right here? We had the Karukan fantasy variation. Well, A4 is so surprising for me. Because, yeah. because I don't think that B5 is a threat. But okay. This looks a bit soft to me because I, as we discussed, I think white should play here for, for a kingside attack with some bishop E3 or G5, knight BD2, shifting the queen over E to E1. And A4, this looks very, very slow to me. But mm -hmm. Yeah, same for me. But maybe it's theory, I don't know. Okay, so e4, castling, and knight to d2. And bishop c7. Okay. Well, no, it's well, maybe she's preparing to um, regroup, uh, regroup this knight via c4. And Maybe the idea is to play this bishop from c4 now somewhere, I don't know. Um, but then e4 might be hanging, so. Why not go for queen e1? Yeah, okay. This is and then. Ah, yeah, it happened. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> good. <laughs> Just a moment. Good news. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, of course, uh, queen e1, this is the tip here, but, but I don't like that the bishop is blocked here. This was why. Um, but queen e1 is the typical square for the queen, has the advantage to um, unpin this one. And then some lines um, can swing into the attack, and of course also the queen might go to into the attack, depending on circumstances. Oh, what interesting, it seems the engine doesn't, um, doesn't like queen e1 at all. Maybe there will be problems here with the center. I mean, the center of white looks a bit shaky, in fact. Yes, but rook e8 is also not so easy to play because f7 can yeah. be a problem. Yeah, no, then I guess the knight g5 might be unpleasant. Mm -hmm. So what else? You're a Karakhan player, you know it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm playing the queen to b6 line because this is too dangerous <laughs> for me <laughs> with black. What I was admit that, so it's not clear to me how to, what's the right way to arrange here the black pieces. But I was thinking about playing knight to b6 and then mm -hmm. taking on d4 and putting mm -hmm. pressure on this pawn. Also, I mean on both mm -hmm. pawns in the center, d4 and e4. Yeah, but exactly after knight b6, I don't know, this probably later then this move will uh, make some sense, I don't know. Mm. Of course, white will not give the bishop, but play... Yeah, where to go with the bishop? B3, B3. 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 And then yeah, push I'm with A5. I'm a bit too slow with my attack in the center. Mm -hmm. I think there should be something better for black, but I don't know exactly what. Well, a very principled approach would be, in fact, taking D4. Immediately. Mm -hmm. And play C5 then. Kay. Oh, the engine doesn't like it. Ah, oh no, sorry, e5 is coming already. No, no, sorry. Yes, I and there is no knight yeah, yeah. d5. Oh, I take it back. I take it back. Otherwise, no, c5 would be good if white could be forced um, if white could be forced to play d5, then it would be very nice. But, of course, e5 is crushing. So, how to put pressure here on the white center? Maybe rook e8 is playable, because we still have the move bishop h5, but... Or maybe to play, some play. I wonder what about, about a move like bishop h5 here. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a bit might be dangerous because if the knight is coming here, but 
does have some advantages. Because now also f7 is protected, so maybe in some lines now we really can take in, in d4 and play rook e8. But black must be very careful because in a moment we have taken in d4, then always um, we have to look out for this push with e4, e5 then. Although here the knight can go to g5, so and also maybe the bishop can go to g6. Maybe this is. Mm -hmm. I'm not absolutely sure, but it might be interesting. Uh, anyway, there's a very sharp battle now ahead. Quite interesting. Maybe a4 is not so bad, and I think something happens. It is bishop h5. Ah. <laughs> 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 Seems we are finding all mm -hmm. the moves. Mm -hmm. uh, I like the idea with rook e8 and then putting pressure on mm -hmm. e4. And here it comes in handy uh, that the bishop was in c7 because with the bishop on d6, this plans with um, quick knight h4, knight f5 would be unpleasant, but here at least it uh, comes without a tempo on the bishop. Mm -hmm. And in the moment, white goes um, knight h4. In this moment, um, d4 isn't protected. So uh, this can be a moment when it's good to take in d4 and maybe play something like knight b6. And yeah. And now, of course, it's unpleasant for white because d4 is unprotected. The question also is what to do with the bishop on c1. Yeah, that's what I said. That I didn't like so much the... Um, the move knight d2 without bringing out the bishop first. Yeah, because now I don't really know what to do with white. I can't move with the knights so well because then always my pawns in the center get weak. But what to do with my poor bishop? Yeah, that's what. Yeah, that's what I said. I didn't like knight d2. Mm. This, um, this approach a4 knight, uh, knight d2. I don't know. So instead of knight to d2, you immediately wanted to go for queen e1. I wouldn't play a4. Okay, <laughs> then here instead of a4, what would you like to play? Well, I would, um, if it doesn't hang something, <laughs> I would play either bishop e3 or bishop g5. Then. Not worried about e4? No, because f7 is still hanging. Mm -hmm. Okay, just to show. Take, take. Well, I guess something terrible is happening on f7 now. Well, I can take on f7 if I want. I mean, maybe there are better moves. But bishop f7 is good enough, I think. Yeah, it is good enough for sure. Take and... Uh, Knight e5. And yes. And no, no, this black. Also and after bishop e3, my dear, next move to play knight b2, d2. Mm -hmm. Yeah, much better. And this looks much more harmonious. Yes. The bishop is stabilizing the mm -hmm. center pawns. And then I play queen e1. Mm -hmm. Yes, I like your way of playing. Maybe king h1 is a useful move later on. But because b5, uh, a4, knight bd2, I don't know, it's strange. But maybe it's you. Um. Oh, but somehow I'm wondering what you will do. Oh, we are here right now in the game. Yeah, I think now it's not so easy. I mean, maybe queen h4. I don't know, queen h4 at this moment, black can play bishop g6. Because the only drawback of bishop g6 can be in some moment. Um, that white can play knight h4 and change the bishop. But if my queen was in h4, then <laughs> the queen h4, then bishop g6 for sure is quite quite good move then. But the bishop protects the whole um, the whole um, king side, mm -hmm. and you would not be afraid of any attack. <laughs> no, <laughs> this bishop That's would good. be your best friend. <laughs> and now it's very really difficult for white to make a next move. I mean, yeah, the center is a big problem. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a drawback of this um, fantasy variation. <coughs> but of course, this type of center structure, if not supported, um, can become a weakness in the attacking target. Mm. Yeah, here I like the black position, definitely. Me too. Good news for my Karo Khan. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's have a look at the game between Drona Valley and Dinara. Knight c3 happened. And e4. Ah, knight c3 is three. interesting. This is unusual, I think. 
I only know some setups here with um, a, a think I played this by transposition with white in some games and, and this setup here. And black has uh, to decide whether to play e5 or not. And knight c3, this is, um, I think it shows that white really wants to gear, play a game out of theory. But it also had some some king's Indian king's Indian line against the fear uh, the fear and Keto line against the king's Indian with colors reversed. And always in these types of uh, lines reversed is the question: uh, what to do with the tempo? You've got more. Is it worth anything? It's even interesting, for example, as I'm a Dutch player, I was a Dutch player for many many years, that. Um, uh, that also people asked me, and um, not me uh, only, but also other Dutch players, for example, Vladimir Malaniuk, who was one of the creators of the Leningrad system, and very, very successful with black for many years with this, was asked why doesn't he play first f4, if with, the, uh, with black, with the Dutch is so successful, and he was laughing and said, he very intelligent words, the extra tempo will hurt me. <laughs> and it's it's uh, it's difficult to explain it in a logical way, but it really happens in several openings with colors reversed. That with the tempo tempo up, you have a worse there's a worse score uh, than with the normal black opening. And one of the series is the information theory. That with the tempo up, you give some information to the opponent that um, he or she can use to his or her advantage. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's also, of course, some psychological factors because with white you have the feeling you must prove some advantage. With black, you are usually you're happy if you have some, for example, some strange, unclear position. If with white, you're not so happy with this. Then <laughs> 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 and what do you think about the English line with c4, e5, looking like some kind of Sicilian? Yeah, also here, this main this uh, the real main line of c4, e5, when black plays with um, knight c3, knight f6, g3, d5, and so is this. Um, kind of dragon reversed. I think white never showed any kind of advantage in his main lines. So this would be one of the, pr the proof of this um, theory. Because it's interesting if with white, I know from at times with e4, if against the dragon variation with white you play some slow stuff with, um, with bishop e2 and something castle or um, also g3, bishop g2 and castle without playing the sharpest lines against the dragon, then in many cases had the, the impression that already are slightly worse with white. And black can play this with a tempo down and gets good position. So it's <laughs> 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 I never understood what's the logic behind it, but <laughs> chess <laughs> is full of mysteries. <laughs> I like your theory. Mm. You said before with the information. Mm -hmm. Too much information is not good. Well, as <coughs> As you have got a master in physics, then um <laughs> <laughs> only a bachelor. <laughs> yeah, a bachelor in physics. Sorry, <laughs> you know from quantum quantum theory, that information yeah. is everything. <laughs> so this is another proof of this. Um, and too this much theory. information can confuse you. <laughs> Just for sure. Too little also can have drawbacks. Since Okay, but here this is an interesting uh, interesting try to use the extra tempo. Now, basically, when compared with this King's Indian lines, white does have the extra, ah, sorry. White does have this extra move, but the question, are we so happy with this move? Well, the other lines, when it does have an advantage, let's, for example, if Angela, let's say black plays in a very principled way, plays d4, knight e2 and e5. And now, for example, white uh, does have the square h2, but just in principle, now white can play f4 without being afraid of the typical counter blow with knight g4 to e3. Mm -hmm. But concerning the, the information theory, I'm sure it also will have some drawbacks in some moment that this pawn is in h3. Maybe there will be some attack in some moment when white will lose a tempo or um, who knows. Of course, black always can um, change in e4. This is always an option here. And put a knight to d4, something like this. I mean, yeah, but it's interesting because in similar lines also, um, black likes to play bishop e6. And uh, after knight, uh, now white can go knight g5, and black doesn't have the typical um, counter blow bishop g4. So one can see there's a kind of prophylaxis against two typical black plants. So what would you play with black here? 
Interesting for me is that the engine prefers black in this position. Yeah, this is for sure. No, in this King's Indian attack setups, it's always okay. doesn't like it for white at all, the, the engine. I think I would take on E4. Yeah, that's for sure a very solid approach. But I guess white will take back. Mm, well, even with the knight, maybe it's not so stupid. And do I need to play h6 so that I can play bishop e6 later? Because I really enjoy bishop e6. Okay, let's say um, take an e4. Mm -hmm. I think as for sure takes an e4 is a very solid and probably also a good move. And now is the question if the... Well, the crucial question is I think if, if black now would have to take on e4, uh, then white would be relatively happy. But if, uh, and it's a tactical question, black just can play b6, and white cannot make use here of this diagonal, um, then white doesn't have anything. If black now has time to play bishop b7 and queen d7, and the structure is absolutely nothing for white, I think black is slightly better. Mm -hmm. so While if black takes, I think then I would prefer the white side maybe a bit. Then white can later play c3 and the structure is a little a little better for white. So this is quite interesting. But I think this is the problem B6. Simply protecting this pawn. Um, so this means white probably should take back with the pawn. But now is the drawback that black maybe can use the square D4. Maybe just, I don't know, that's... Right now? Or maybe here you are the bishop e6 because now um, we've got the square yeah, c4. Yeah, I also have c4, yes. Maybe now bishop e6 is interesting. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> yeah, because now knight g5, bishop c4, and then. And that's not what white wants then. And this again puts the question to white what to do. And maybe now in some moment black can play queen c8 and hit h3. <laughs> <laughs> Bishop okay, not e3. More bishop e3. Yes. Do I need to play h6 someone? Maybe queen a5 now? Is there there to play rook d8? Mm -hmm. oh, now again, the, um, the engine likes white a bit better, but a little bit. But this would be probably about equal. So maybe this was the reasonable way to play for both sides. But I'm sure this is a prepared idea with H3, then you wouldn't find this over the board. Mm, why not? I don't think so. It's a weird move if you don't. Absolutely unnatural. I think so. I no, for me it's okay. It's also some kind of waiting move, telling Black, so show me what you play, and then I decide where to go with my bishop on c1. Yeah, but it's, well, and I think anyway, it's an opening strategy, especially targeted against Dinara, because in, s in many games I saw her using up lots of time in the opening, mm -hmm. and to put her up out of normal series already on move 8. Um, of course, this is a clever strategy to put her into time pressure later. Uh, you're right, yeah, and we can already see mm -hmm. that Tronovali has a lot of time advantage. Mm -hmm. It's 30 minutes. Uh, that's already a lot, yeah. Okay, so quickly have a look at the other games before we go into mm -hmm. the first break. We have Maria against Alexandra. Oh, yeah, lots are happening. Mm -hmm. Ah, interesting. White played bishop b5. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Hitting indirectly e5. Knight e7. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a typical countermeasure. Mm -hmm. Knight c6. Kay. Yeah, now it's... Well, the, the white bishop has been pushed back, but on the other hand... Um, and now it's the question whether this is an achievement for black or a weakness. <laughs> <laughs> on first sight, it looks like mm -hmm. it's an achievement for black. At least for me. I don't know. It's hard to say at the moment also, but... 
it's very concrete right place now d4 i think this is the only way to do something mm -hmm. Yeah, because now if the, if the queen side is opening, these this pawns can be also targets. For example, a queen d3 move in some moment with a double attack to... Um, yes, good idea. Yeah, black took. Ah, and queen and immediately queen d3. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is um, something mm -hmm. hanging around. Mm -hmm. In a similar way, by the way, this... Um, Many years ago, when I was proud to win a game against Boris Baske, former world champion, I played him four times, and with such a double attack and similar Lopez, I won an important pawn. <laughs> and also the game? Yeah, in the end, I won the game as well. Um, because it was just today in the, in the interview, there was an interview, and I was asked about my most memorable games, and of course, winning against Boris Baske is. This is really nice. And did you also have some other games against world champions? Yes, altogether, um, I won three games against uh, former coming world champions. I won against uh, Vasily Smyslov, and I also won against Alexander Kalifman. So why aren't you a world champion? Well, I think I had two handicaps, besides maybe a lack of talent, of course. <laughs> um, the first one being that I started very late. I went to the chess club only when I was some like 11, 12 years old. And of course, nowadays, all the top players, they started latest with six, usually, or maybe eight, the very latest. And the second is that I never had a trainer. Um, only my first, oh, my first trainer was when I was uh, already grandmaster myself, and just for some days. And so I think these are two quite big handicaps. I had to learn everything myself. But for me, it's a great achievement that you became grandmaster just by doing chess on your own. Yeah, well, thank you. I mean, yeah. If you see it this way, it's quite okay, but I mean, my best position in the world ranking was something like um, um, place 70, maybe. And I don't think it was possible to go much further with this um, uh, handicaps then. Mm -hmm. So how far did you reach in the candidate tournament? How close? What was your closest place for playing for a world championship? <laughs> Well, one of my, or probably my best achievement was winning the Sonal tournament. Um, I think it was in 95 when I was ahead of Kochnoi. And uh, then I was qualified then for the Intersonal, which was the next step to the, um, uh, to the candidates. But this was the moment when um, Kasparov and Short um, split the chess world by creating their own um, chess federation and then everything collapsed and for two years there was uh, no more world champion cycle. And this was very frustrating because then I was in my absolute top shape. And then um, for there were several developments which were pretty unpleasant from a professional point of view. And so then I decided basically to quit my uh, professional career. And I started a career um, as, um, as a coach with um, NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. But still, then, then two years later, they resumed some kind of cycle. And this was the first time um, that there was a knockout world championship. I was still qualified, but not being really, really professional anymore, not being uh, in such good shape. But still, I succeeded to win the first, um, the first knockout match against the then American US, uh, US champion, Alexander Yomolinsky, who was absolutely top player in those days. This was a good achievement. But unfortunately, I got knocked out in the second round because for this one I was absolutely unprepared against, because I didn't believe I would uh, survive <laughs> the first round. <laughs> I, <guess laughs> I was too pessimistic. <laughs> against the Brazilian champion uh, Milos, uh, Gilberto Milos, who was very strong in this time, this time. And he won deservedly. But nice experiences to play with all these top players. Yeah, of course, in my time I played against lots and lots, of, for example, of very strong Soviet grandmasters. Also won lots of games against them. So I'm very thankful that you are here and that you are showing <laughs> your ideas with <laughs> us and also your knowledge. <laughs> wow, thanks a lot. <laughs> You're so charming. <laughs> It's such a pleasure to uh, commenting with you, <laughs> getting fresh <laughs> ideas about Karo Kanen. <laughs> <laughs> It's also a profit for me mm. because you know so much mm. about especially openings, but also later strategical ideas and also end games. Well, it must be said, although that in many lines, of course, as not being professional anymore, 
Um, I'm not so up to date, but I'm, I'm still following the top games. As I'm writing also two weekly chess columns, of course, and also working um, sometimes as um, giving private coaching. But my own um, maximum, maybe four or five games a year, usually in the with our own team in the league. But I do my best. <laughs> 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 okay, so maybe it's time for a break. Yeah, I think okay. it's a good moment, so mm -hmm. see you soon. <laughs>
How are your energy levels? Do you think you can get through to the end with good play? Yeah, I feel like I got a lot of motivation from the gala yesterday, and it helped me in all regard in all the regards. And I feel like I will go on like this, and it will be become better. Okay, well, good luck and the best of luck and play in the last few rounds. Thank you. I'm joined by Zujina here in the press center. Zujina just did a draw with Nana Zagnitze. Zujina, you were telling me before that um, this pawn sacrifice you prepared some time ago, but you couldn't remember all the details. Tell us a bit about the game today. Okay, uh, in the opening, I decided to sacrifice a pawn uh, for some initiative for uh, but okay, I, I didn't. Uh, uh, for, I forgot the line, and uh, maybe some moment I play not so well. Um, I think uh, after she played C4, maybe be sure you four not so good, mm -hmm. because uh, after this move, I, uh, I cannot keep my uh, two bishops. So maybe. Bishop e one, bishop b one, or maybe bishop g six take and rook d four for some attack, and then um, after bishop e four, I think my position is a bit worse. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, it's it's hard, it's hard, uh, hard feature. Okay. I thought that although you had um, one pawn less, I thought that uh, you could achieve a draw because of the opposite colored bishops. Did you think that was the way to go to get the draw? Is the best option to, for draw is to keep the opposite colored bishops? Yeah, maybe I I didn't check all the lines. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So now you are on uh, minus one. Um, today you draw it, but tomorrow you have black against Humpy and then another black against Dinara. So you have now two blacks in a row. Uh, how are you feeling? Are you well prepared with the black pieces for this tournament? Uh, 
I I don't have anything special just uh, play normally. Yesterday was the rest day. Did you do anything special? Did you go out to visit or you were concentrated here in the hotel? Uh, I I go outside and uh, visit uh, the city. Uh, it's very beautiful and uh, there is many uh, old buildings. Uh, it's very nice. Last night there was the charity dinner. I saw you were here with us in the charity dinner. Did you have a good time? Did you like the possibility of all the players mixing with the, with the donors and friends in the dinner? Yeah, it's a very nice dinner and um, I'm happy with it. Okay. Well, good luck in the last five rounds, Zuzina. Thank you. Welcome back to the seventh round of the FIDE Women's Grand Prix. Yeah, hi. Um, we are looking forward to um, analyzing with you, some discussing with you, some very fascinating games. And this was interesting for me that we see here of um, Humpy Conero with White against Shu Jinner. As, um, sorry, just <coughs> still having a slight cold, so sorry if I have to sneeze in between. At least it's absolutely um, not dangerous concerning catching any viruses for you, only for poor Veronica. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but 
She has very good defensive powers, of course, uh, not only in chess, but, <laughs> 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 but also in life. <laughs> so optimistic if she won't catch it. Uh, yeah, and I said this, this reminded me very much of a uh, recent, very recent brilliancy of Anish Giri. And I think it's possible that we're in nearly the same position now, and uh, this would be very bad news for the Chinese lady. Um, by the way, someone in the chat wrote, so thanks for that, that this game was played between Giri and Gukesh. Ah, Gukesh was the black, yes, thank you. I was not sure. Yeah, Rook C8 we yeah, didn't like so much. Yeah, there was this very nice maneuver of Rook um, C2 to E2, and it turns out this on which is absolutely not obvious that the rooks are very strong on the on the e-line. Now mm -hmm. d4, and now white exactly. Um, Poor. Oh, she didn't play it yet. And now um, she can. Uh, she might play exactly like Giri if she puts the rook in e1. And that's I'm not sure, maybe somebody... Ah, there's even something better, it seems, according to the engine. No, oh, the engine likes it. Oh, can we already play something with knight g5? As you mentioned earlier. Already here? And then d5? Or I, I'm not sure in, in which order. But something... Something with taking on e6 and also knight g5. Yeah, yeah these were the basic ideas in the, in the Giri game. Mm -hmm. But after doubling the rooks on, because... Maybe there's something even better here, but uh, the ideas being of the rook e1. Now here some like a very strong threat to um uh, I will kill this mouse someday. Can somebody bring me a cat to <laughs> <laughs> Where's the mouse? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I frightened the mouse too much. Ah here it is. There are some very strong threats to play knight um just to show knight e to g five and then play rook takes e six. And this motif this was absolutely crushing in the Geary game. And that's why we need both of the rooks. Yes, exactly. So first we take on e6 with the rook, and then again with a rook. Exactly. Okay. But is it also possible in some kind of other order, or also taking with the bishop on e6? Because also the rook is now not on d8. Yeah, so yeah. that's why there mm -hmm. is no pressure on mm -hmm. d4, and I guess that's mm -hmm. also a problem here. Uh, but want to, uh, mm -hmm. what do you want to play concretely? I just want to be sure if knight g5 immediately is not working or mm -hmm. working, and just to be sure. Mm -hmm. I think it's too early, but mm -hmm. just want to check. So you would but go but for... But it's hanging. Oh, yeah, that's the reason. Yeah, sorry. Uh, other no, otherwise it would be strong, but uh, now it's un unprotected. So. Yeah. I immediately wanted to crush here, but it's not working. Yeah. Why me? It's not my position. <laughs> 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 This makes me cry. I uh, know the other question is playing d5 in this. I mean, d5 also is a typical move. I mean, but here probably um, black can also looks critical for black, but because black cannot take due to knight e g5, so the only defense is rook d8. And, and now we wrong. see that this rook is wrong yeah, placed yeah. here. So yeah, here? black has to, yeah, because if uh, just to uh, show maybe the variation, if black. Uh, Black uh, takes in d5, then this is knight e g5, of course, is already winning. So this means that black most probably in some some way has to play rook d8 here. Either I oh know he may not take, so this he must first play rook d8 now. Right, here's the question, how strong this is then? Plus five, according okay. to the engine. Okay, so then here's where I mean maybe just d6 is strong enough, I don't know. Yeah, maybe d6 and then now you move knight g5 then. Yeah. Yeah, I just think this is totally winning. Just a question, what can... Yeah, because black lost the tempo probably compared with the, with the Geary game, so um, here maybe d5 is even stronger then. And also interesting, I had, I had also this problem sometimes in my career. <coughs> Whether you stick to the known plan or <laughs> with the position being slightly different. 
Tja, what can black do here? Um, it looks very bad. Maybe the only tries to play, I don't know, retreat with the bishop and on d6 play the queen to d8, but of course it looks extremely passive. And here. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry, but um, <laughs> just uh, look. But uh, the, the engine likes it relatively better than the other one, if I see the bar correctly. Mm -hmm. Well, because uh, from the logic, if we say that this idea was knight g5 is totally crushing, then after d6, now we can keep the queen on d8 and, and at least avoid immediate disaster, even though it looks very bad. But even just taking on e6, of course, will be no clear advantage for white, probably. Ah, but you see, she didn't play it. She sticks mm -hmm. to the giri plan. And but probably d5 in this moment was even stronger. I think so, too. But also, of course, a very strong move. Yeah, also here white is clear advantage. Because if black tries to avoid it, I mean, this is a very big concession to taking e4. Probably just rook taking, uh, yeah, rook has to take on e4. And now already there's this threat to uh, rook takes e6, mm -hmm. winning, and also just positioning d5 also would be winning. move is also very strong, but it's interesting because in this position it really seemed that just this direct d5 is even stronger. But Humpy was sticking to the known theory. I remember when I had an <coughs> absolutely disastrous experience with um, a similar thing because um, the only time in my life that I had really one week only for myself a top trainer was Zoltan Wibli in those days, Hungarian super grandmaster uh, in former times. Um, he gave me one week training in Grünfeld. <laughs> yeah, you already mentioned yeah, I told yes. you But <coughs> it never was uh, to my taste somehow. I always got depressive and I saw the white deep pawn <coughs> on d5 or d6, which is not a good um, starting point for a Grunfeld player. And then I had a game <coughs> against then probably the strongest um, in those days woman player in the world, um, or maybe second strongest, Pia Kramling. And they reached exactly one of the lines that we had, that we had prepared, I was pretty sure. And then I saw, okay, and if I play, <coughs> and I already wanted to play the move that uh, I prepared with Zoltan Ribli, but out of the sudden I saw, oh, when I, dis when I played this move, there's a very dangerous sacrifice for white, some, some knight sacrifice, which gives her a strong kingside attack. And then I saw another move, which is not so active, but uh, it's not in our, was not in our files, but it would prevent the sacrifice. So what would you do? the variation you learned. Exactly, I did. And she immediately answered with the sacrifice and I got totally crushed and uh, turned out the analys analysis was totally wrong. <laughs> really? <laughs> but the move that I saw would have prevented the sacrifice. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Didn't you check so the analysis? Yeah, but in those days it was not so easy to check because there were no engines. So <laughs> oh. <laughs> we were never totally sure then. So and since then I decided better over the board to um, trust my Instinct Your instincts. Then to follow the theory, this was <laughs> a very sad experience and a very nice one for Pia. <laughs> 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 it was a good game. <laughs> <laughs> and it even would have been slightly better if I had uh, played a move that I um, saw over the board, but okay. <laughs> but this was bad luck. No, it was, uh, <coughs> I was afraid to follow my, um, my own idea. This was the punishment. Yeah, I think this position is very critical for black. Mm -hmm. Also after rook fe1. Yeah. I think it's already beyond repair. I mean, that's, I think. Objectively, black is lost. I guess so, but not just the engine. Yeah, yeah. Very lost for black. But interesting, you would not think that it's so dangerous, no? No. Not on first sight. Yeah, probably this was the discovery of Giri that this um <coughs> that this plan was this is doubling on Ela and it's not automatical because uh, while we would think well he has nothing to get, it only works in <coughs> conjunction with this tactical motives of knight g5 and of course sometimes d5. But okay, so let's look at some other games because yes, maybe in a higher sense already over. 
Okay, here we have the game between Zanzaya and Shungi. It was bishop h5. Yeah, that's a move he also liked. And king uh, h1. Very okay. slow. I don't like the white play here. Mm. Okay, rook e8, bishop b3. Another move just waiting mm -hmm. somehow. Yeah, but now I think it's difficult for white already. Yeah. Okay, crazy. So many waiting moves. Ah, now um, now black played exactly the plan that I proposed before. Take, take, and now c5, yeah, c5 is because working, yeah. Yeah, because now the big difference is that the, mm, here the rook and the white queen are vis-a-vis. -vis and on e5 the black can just take in d4. Mm -hmm. And this is very bad news for white, because if white has to change on c5 or play d5, then um, black will get total control here over the black squares. I mean, maybe it's even a better move here than knight e5, but in, but in principle here, this um, I wouldn't be surprised if there's something stronger, but maybe knight g4 to put the knight to e5. It's also interesting. Well, the computer doesn't like it so much, but... Mm. I don't know, but I think this, well, probably white must play d5, I guess, but um, maybe just knight e5 and... I mean, it's not over for white, but um, I think it's uh, very pleasant for black then. And still, there is this problem with the bishop on z1. Yeah, but maybe, n yeah, because... Uh, also this pressure against e4, because otherwise white might change and put the knight to c4. But probably the, um, the pawn in c4 e4 will be very weak here with the... And with also with the bishop blocked here, there's no counterplay against f7. And yeah, I like this idea. I think here... Here Tan put up a, um, played a very good um, positional game so far. Very and also so. Sansaya was just waiting to yeah, watch with a4, bishop b3, king h1. Yeah, and it's absolutely not in the spirit of the fantasy variation. Fantasy variation is a very attacking. sharp attacking variation. So this, yeah, this, I mean, this is not her day probably. But mm. we saw many surprises and, and turnarounds here in this tournament. So, mm. But objectively, I think black is clearly better here. And also the engine agrees. Yeah, I think she played d5. Yes, d5. Sorry, mm -hmm. yeah. d5 was played. Yeah, no. Um, well, as we said, the other moves as well, but if in doubt, you can play knight uh, to e5. Okay. Have a look to the other games. Yeah, maybe even some moves like Bishop A. I was thinking Bishop A5. Is this interesting? Or lot does it allow White to play E5? Ah, maybe it's playing with fire because White might play E5. And oh, better, better keep control. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here we have Tronavali against Dinara. H6 is funny. It's a mirror move to H3. <coughs> <laughs> Probably preparing your idea, Bishop E6. Yeah, it was H3, H6. <laughs> and now taking, taking. Queen takes and Bishop E3. Queen D6. Leaving this diagonal. Um, maybe now, yeah, this is interesting. Now white must do something quick. Uh, quick as because as I said, if black succeeds to stabilize, either with, with um, B6 and Bishop B7 or maybe Bishop E6, D5, then um, black even is slightly better. Well, it must be noted that usually b2 is not really hanging here because h6 is also hanging. So the typical white moves, one knight d2 would be one try. But I guess white black has time to stabilize here with, with b6. This is, um, this is always the important point. Otherwise, knight d2 would be would be dangerous, but I think black can play b6, and it always depends whether there are some tactical problems here. But here I think, in fact, that um, black is absolutely okay. 
And white has only a very brief period of time to make use of this hanging pawn. I mean, white can play queen d2, of course, hitting h6, but um, I guess black can simply play king h7. And if white does not have uh, any tactics and black stabilizes, then black is even slightly better. Mm -hmm. So maybe the idea h6 was quite nice, just showing white that, uh, just saying to white you don't have anything. And <laughs> <laughs> maybe here was a better move than bishop e3. <coughs> I think on moves like knight g5, probably black um, retreats with the queen to d7. And again, it's nothing for white. But here still the engine shows about equal, but... Mm. Wondering to play c3 in this position, but... Not worried about d3? Sorry? If you play c3, aren't you worried about uh, d3? No, I'm very much worried, but um <laughs> 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 it's it's quite concrete. The idea is to play um, threatening uh, winning a tempo because in a way I threaten knight d4. And at least if black retreats to d6. <coughs> I well, it might be out of transposition. I thought about, yeah, or maybe now to play first bishop f4 to close this diagonal. I don't, I just show, but I don't really believe it. That is just to provoke e5 then. And now to play bishop e3 and then, then somehow follow up with knight e2. But I also don't believe, I think it's... This is always the, the unpleasant thing, it looks... Um, some of the white pieces look active, but in this is structure with this black pawn c5 against d3 with half open d-line. Ah, yeah, she plays knight d2. I think black will just play b6. I mean, the other moves as well, but this is the most principled. And I really like the structures with black then. Because mm -hmm. later on you put a knight to d4, and if you can change the, in a way, this uh, bishops on the long diagonal, then the white king will be weak. Yeah, I like it with black. What's the plan with white in this position? Yeah, this is the problem. I mean, I had similar positions with white, or also in a black in a king's Indian, and I never found a real plan, so it's... <laughs> 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 well, white can try some stuff with h4, h5. Sure. And after h4, if I play h5 with black? Then I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I said try. Losing on time again. <laughs> <laughs> try to do it. Usually sometime white has to play c3 and then um, to take the square d4 and also this long diagonal if at latest when black has played king h7 this pawn will be hanging. And after c3 then d3 will be weak. At this moment white might still play c3 but um, but black has no hurry. I mean we'll just play bishop, bishop b7 and Yes, I said. Uh, I would like the black position. I think black is slightly better. Because white comes too late to be. The point being in this position, you, you need very concretely um, to make use of this weak, um, for the moment, weak pawn on c5. And you if you don't succeed to um, exploit this somehow, and black can stabilize with b6, bishop b7, or somehow bishop b6, d5, then. And then the structure is just slightly better for black. Okay. So good news for Dinara. Mm -hmm. But anyway, Dinara in many games, she played um, the opening stage and also afterwards she played strategically very well. But just she fell into time trouble and then committed some tactical uh, mistakes. Mm. So does this recommend you of anything? <laughs> <laughs> yes, keep an eye on your time. <laughs> 
Yeah, somehow Because it's many, like many my chess career. <laughs> we had many discussions about this already. <laughs> Because um, I think this was the main reason for several losses you had in. Yes, unfortunately, and also might be creating drop. <laughs> well, as, as Kochner put it sometimes, in time pressure there are no heroes. But <laughs> I want to be a hero in time <laughs> pressure. <laughs> 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 no, I understand, yeah. I'm following your advice now, so I'm playing a lot faster. Yes? Mm -hmm, yes. Ah, ah. Actually, I'm doing it. good news. You didn't tell me. <laughs> oh, yeah, not <laughs> yes, yeah. It should be a surprise when my rating is much okay. higher, you know. <laughs> <laughs> then you come to me and ask, Veronica, what did, did you do? <laughs> and then yeah, I followed your advice and <laughs> it's working. <laughs> First, I want to see <laughs> if it's working. <laughs> no, but the weird thing happened to me now because I'm used to be in time trouble. Like, and for me, it's like normal. I'm only having some minutes. My opponent still has like 30, 40 minutes for the game. Okay, no worries about this. But now it's the opposite. Now my opponents only have some minutes. I still have so 30 or 40 minutes left and I'm getting so nervous. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not used to this. <laughs> so it's a weird feeling. And the best advice about your opponent's time trouble is What? I ignore it. Uh, ignore it, yeah. Play exactly as if they would have uh, one hour of time. Mm. Yeah, as I said, I need to get used to it. Yeah, of course. It's <laughs> But it will be a pleasant adjustment, you will see. <laughs> <used to it. laughs> yeah, very interesting. So keep on working on your time. I can only <laughs> <laughs> say, yeah. Okay, so let's have a look at this nice game oh, between Maria and Alexandra. Mm -hmm. Queen d3 and... Yeah, g6, as we expected. Taking on b5. Now two and pieces queen are attacked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, also logical move. Knight d2 is threatening to um, win a piece with knight e4. Mm -hmm. Rook b8, eight. and now interesting move. The queen retreats all the way to f1. Yeah, but I think this is the best square. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, there might be knight yeah. f4. Yeah, it's funny. It's just unusual square for the queen on f1. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but still, it looks good for white because the knight. Um, This knight move looks very powerful, and now also this, this, um, these black squares here. Later on, the bishop can come to h6, knight comes to e4. So this is a bit typical of some Roy Lopez position, where also sometimes it looks harmless, and when open it opens up, <coughs> the white pieces show a lot of uh, potential. Yeah, very difficult to play for black. But as we discussed yesterday, Alexandra seems to need bad positions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only then she shows her best chess. Yeah, but objectively I think she's outplayed now and uh, White has clear advantage. Yeah. What does the, the engine exactly? Oh. Knight E3. Oh, that's cool. I didn't see that one. I'm sorry. What an interesting mm -hmm. move. Wow. Very cool. The engine isn't too impressed, but it's a creative idea. Let's look at Maria. Did she see it? Did she foresee it? No, I think she didn't see it. She looks a bit nervous. Although normally she's very calm, but here... Yes. She's very slightly shaking. Crazy move. Very interesting. Well, I think what's obvious that White has to take it and has to take it with a pawn. No, do you see any alternative? I'm thinking. This is not easy. No, well, I mean, if, but... Well, but I think at least um, White can always play, I mean... Well, F E might must be played, I think. B E and now uh, just um, play King H1 and E D2 and then probably take with the Knight and D2. It's 
So now white capped white capped her structure and again the knight is threatening coming to, to come to e4. And then there are lots of nice ideas in the black squares. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's a shocker, but it's um if you take a deep breath, poo <laughs> <laughs> Come to best shape, first uh, step of the our Königsplan model. <laughs> yeah. Do some breathing exercises like you do in our seminars. Nevertheless, Maria already answered, so I think she was thinking about the move knight e3. No, but there's no alternative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> Even if you totally <laughs> overlooked it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but if your move is forced, then. Yeah, yeah, but if someone surprises me, then I at least spend a little bit of time. Just to think about it. I don't know if it's right because if it's Calm a forced down. move and, and also shows your opponent that you did not see it, maybe then. <laughs> I think if there's no alternative, then you should play it quickly. Then. If you're sure there's no alternative. Again, I see you're an expert and I need to work on my time spending <laughs> in the game. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so take, take, and king h1, h1 and take, and take. Ah, it was played? Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, I think this line is very, very logical probably the only way to play with white. And so at first sight it looks active for black, and um, but if you look closer, then black has got lots of weaknesses around her king. Mm -hmm. So you think it's better without knight e3? No, no, I think knight e3 is the best chance. I think this position is anyway it's some advantage for white. It's the question what's the, the least evil for black. Okay. Again, Alexandra is under pressure. As usual, <laughs> poor Alexandra, I'm already <laughs> having uh, some kind of pity with her, or well, with the leader, basically, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> so now how to cope with the, all the threats. So it's the question whether black can play f5, maybe. We also have to mention that she is playing very risky here. As you mentioned, with the idea b5, which can be strong, but can also mm -hmm be weak here on b5. Yes, it happened. <laughs> yes, and also here on h7. So, yeah, that's what we were discussing yesterday, that maybe she should go for some stable game, mm -hmm. but, yeah, she decides no all in. <laughs> maybe it doesn't go with her temperament to play some stuff. <laughs> 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 some boring stuff. <laughs> I like it. Very interesting games played by Alexandra. And it's interesting to see how she will manage. To yeah, the interesting question is if she game. can play f5. If she, if she could play f5. No? Yeah, if it doesn't blunder something, then um, it might solve some problems. Because this knight e4 jump, this is the biggest threat. So I mean, this does have some logic. Of course, white can play some stuff with bishop b3 or even first take and bishop b3. Yeah. Uh, just one question why can't we take on e6? No, we can. And then you mean the rook also takes on b3, and yeah. this is okay for black? Well, maybe not okay, but um, white, is white is still better, but I mean, we are looking for the relatively best. Mm, yeah, okay, it's not oh so but nice. This is, this is nothing. I think f5, white, probably black must play f5, because otherwise if the knight is coming to e4, it's so strong. But of course, there are other options now for, um, for white. I mean, knight c4 is a move. Yes. But I think I would definitely play f5 with black because the long knight e4 is, is very tough. But at first sight, here I even would think it's maybe not so terrible for black, although the engine definitely disagrees. Then. Is there some tactical refutation here? I mean, of course, it looks very shaky for black. White might start also with bishop b3. But yeah, at, at first sight, I would think that after f5, maybe it's not as bad as I thought in the first moment. Mm -hmm. What are the candidates for white? Knight c4, knight, four, knight f3, bishop b3. I mean, knight f3 would be a normal move. But 
What's the question where the queen goes after knight c4? Let's try this one. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is somehow the more the most direct. So where would you go with the queen? <laughs> so difficult questions today. <laughs> course it's a trick when I don't know myself I just ask you <laughs> <laughs> brilliant <no? laughs> this is really brilliant <laughs> looking like the very intelligent grandmaster yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <and stupid. laughs> of course it makes the impression I know that I know the answer and <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> now I know your tricks <laughs> <laughs> I don't know it <laughs> no but in fact it's interesting because after queen queen d5 is critical because bishop of bishop b3, b3 obviously yes. and now um, because a4 is too slow because um, we have just this double attack. Mm -hmm. So this means um, that black probably is in trouble. And, uh, and after queen, after queen d7. queen d7, then white has the very strong move. Bishop a4. Mm. At least I think it's very strong. Now it's just red knight e5 suddenly. Yeah. And all the white squares are um, ooh, very hard for black. Maybe also a5 is hanging and maybe black can play bishop d5. So wife with bishop d5. But um, it looks very shaky. Or the engine doesn't like it at all. Or maybe rook d1 or... Yeah, it's... No, this doesn't... No, um, no, then you can take why it not so. knight e5? Yeah, maybe black the black queen doesn't have squares and then And now you mm -hmm. also need to protect your bishop on c five, otherwise I take mm -hmm. on c six and queen mm -hmm. c four check. So queen yeah. d six? Mm -hmm. And maybe then take in c six and, and bishop f four and and all the white pieces are coming out and yeah, I think. Probably knight takes d6 or, mm -hmm. or bishop oh. f. Or no. I, I think I think I see the winning. I think take, mm -hmm. take, yeah, take, and bishop, bishop f4. Yeah, exactly. And now there's no protection, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, and after ah, g2 is protected, so after queen d5, we have time to play rook a d1, and then it's over. Also, for example, bishop b3, or is it not yeah, good yeah, enough for you? No, no, it's not good enough. <laughs> 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 not good enough, okay. <laughs> I forgot that g2 is protected by mm -hmm. our own queen. I thought we have to change in c6 because then it's not so much. But yeah. this, of course, is totally winning. Interesting. Okay. As we expected, f5 was played mm -hmm. in the game. Yeah, I think it's only chance. But um, now as we analyze now knight c4 and... It's <coughs> plus six. <Wow>. <laughs> <laughs> plus six <laughs> is tough. This one wouldn't sink, no? Plus six. So it's and it's if we move back, then it's uh, plus two. Uh, also unpleasant. So today can be the mm -hmm. big day for mm. Maria. Yeah. For being the first person beating Alexandra in this tournament. And having good chances for a great place in the end of the tournament. Now in the moment Maria is in, in, the, in the middle place? Yeah, she, she has three points. Mm -hmm. So two points behind Alexander, mm -hmm. but if she's winning, there's only one point behind yeah, Alexander. Yeah, so now she looks quite happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First after night c3, of course, this is a shock if you did not see it. Mm -hmm. But She's very excited now to mm -hmm. play a beautiful move. I think mm -hmm. she already is calculating and thinking, wow, it's such <laughs> a great position. I gonna beat her today, being the first mm. one. Yeah, and when I first met, there were Musichuk sisters, I think I told some days ago in this um, beautiful Mainz tournament, also by the great German chess sponsor, my good friend Roman Krulich. Then I played both sisters and I was very impressed because they both have the same very classical chess education, um, good technique, uh, classical openings, sharp tactics, so there's very uh, extremely good classical chess education. Would be interesting. Who was uh, basically her coach trainer for most of the time? Ah, 
I'll just hear something about marriage plans, a bit of honor. <laughs> 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 These are the real interesting news, of course. <laughs> We don't know anything about this, unfortunately. No. So if someone in the chat knows more about <laughs> it, then please <laughs> let us know. We are also very interested Some gossip. and <laughs> curious. Oh, this is that's, but it's interesting because the black position still looks active, but it seems really just because the pieces are so loose and the king is a bit opened up, that this is such... Um, um, there's such so much pressure on black then that white is just winning outright. Yeah, maybe you have the chance to make an interview later in the studio with oh Maria. Yeah. Because yeah. you were so sad mm -hmm. that you couldn't mm -hmm. interview her. Yeah. And yeah, here I'm it a great comes. Fan of, I'm a great fan of Maria, Knight admittedly. C4. Yes. And no, that's not a big choice. I mean, Queen, I think Queen D5, Bishop B3, and then already probably have to give the exchange for uh, less than nothing on B3. I mean, how bad is this? Is there any chance to survive this? But it's hard to believe. I don't think black must take in B3, and then that white is just the exchange up and still better structure. And but I guess still this is the only way to play for black. I think mm -hmm. the other one is even much worse. Than anyway, I'm wondering... Why the engine says plus seven? So I mean, that's even be a better move than that yeah, before. Even a better move, but it's hard to which believe. move? I, don't I have I no don't idea. So. It was not taking here on e6 because queen can take, and this mm -hmm. of course didn't work so well. No, this would be so. The it's best not small this advantage. move, yeah, we just discussed. But what oh, else? Oh, but it must be knight c4. But after knight c4, it's only plus 3, <laughs> according <laughs> to the engine. <laughs> <laughs> we don't believe so much <laughs> in this engine anyway. Probably but if you just <laughs> wait a little bit. Then. <laughs> but if there is a plus 7 position, there must be mm -hmm. something. We can try all legal moves. This <laughs> 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 okay. B4, g4. <laughs> <laughs> Is this how you're playing your chess games? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the living engine. <laughs> with my implanted chip then. Oh, but you can be right with B4. Because then we have this bishop B3. Ah! Oh my god. You're so clever. <laughs> 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 this is right. Oh my god, B4. At least engine mm. believes mm. that this move is stronger than mm -hmm. knight C4. Oh yes, yes. Brilliant, brilliant. Very good. Yeah, before you're right. This is strong. So, for mm -hmm. example, taking, mm -hmm. and now the Very idea nice. is to take here, mm -hmm. and now it's mm -hmm. bishop b3. Yeah. Having an umbrella. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but now it's not rainy anymore in Munich. So at the moment, you need something against the sun. <laughs> but it rains heavily at the black position. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a hard rain, it's gonna fall. <laughs> Blizzard. Yeah, you're right. Before, probably was, was immediately winning a piece. Wow. Very good. Before strong. But still, the computer says there is mm. even something better than B4. No, this I don't believe. You don't believe? But, but why? I also didn't believe in B4. So <laughs> See? Not so happy. Mm. Not sure. Okay, anyway, we found two very mm -hmm. strong moves. We found b4 and we see yeah, knight c4 in the game. Yeah, I think it's strong enough. Because queen d7, also bishop a4, and it seems there's... Yeah, it's terrible position for black. Mm -hmm. I think really relative the best is to give the exchange for nothing, but... Yes. Because queen d7, bishop a4 is. And I think we didn't have a look at this move, but here comes the problem that. Is it rook e6? Or bishop f4. Or bishop f4 again. Both look nice. Bishop f4 looks stronger, yes. Killing. 
Yeah, it's interesting, this hidden dynamic of the white position with all the nearly all the pieces in the back rank or in the second rank and out of the sudden it's totally exploding. Because black has so many weaknesses. Yeah, this is... Black has to resign immediately. On queen d7, we said bishop a4. Mm -hmm. Maybe to check it once more. Yeah, queen d7 was played. Oh, okay. Oh, maybe that's a better move. Because here, what you how much does the engine give here? Plus 1.4. Oh, this is not enough. Only. Mm -hmm. But what does black play? It also looks crushing, but... Um, Maybe again b4 and bishop b3. <laughs> <laughs> okay, again. <laughs> Maybe. But, but here it's no, here it's not so convincing. Mm. Because black can just play then bishop f7 or something. And mm -hmm. no. Oh, but I really love this move before. Okay, what's the let's look at the game now after queen d7. Yes, because yes. I thought bishop a4 is um, in a way automatic. Of course, bishop b3 can be played as well. And on bishop b3, maybe black can still play, let's say, bishop f7. Okay, what are the other candidates besides of... <coughs> I was so sure that bishop a4 is the move. Mm -hmm. And I also don't know why it's not winning, but... But now bishop, maybe first bishop b3 and then uh, bishop a4 is the sum. Okay, what does black play after bishop b3? He's moving with the bishop to h6. I don't know. We will see any time. This would be a bit surprising. Bishop h6, yeah. Yes, okay. But I was also thinking about mm -hmm. this move with the idea of rook to d1. Ah, okay. Just not so sure mm -hmm. about this move. Yeah, this, this was the reason why I didn't like it so much yeah. somehow. I, was I didn't want still to give black the here. time to. Don't, know, don't like it so much. Of course, white. But let's go back one move instead of bishop h6. Um, what was the strongest? Because here still mm. the the engine gives... Um, plus 3. Plus 3, okay. I was so sure that bishop a4 is the right move. Yeah, but it clearly drops, drops to plus 1 only. <laughs> yeah, this is also the... Other um, enigma, miracle. But if we play bishop b3 here, it's also not so much. Also not mm -hmm. We will find this move, okay? You are sure? Yes. <laughs> now I don't want to give up. Right before, mm, I'm also before not 100%. Yeah, I'm also not 100% satisfied mm -hmm. with b4 if the computer says that it's plus 7. Mm -hmm. Was it again? Yeah, I mean plus seven and we mm -hmm. don't see it. Okay, but at least before it's mm. okay for me. Having like a plus four position, mm -hmm. I take this. But now, I don't know, I want to find this move. I'm also wondering why Maria is playing so quickly. Yeah, Bishop H6 played quickly. This is surprising for me because this is obvious the position. Yes. And it's absolutely crucial. And also knight c4. I mean, there mm. are so many interesting ideas, and you know that this is an important point in the game. Okay, knight c4 could understand, because also uh, not seeing before, I was sure there are, there are no other moves then. But here, but here to play bishop h6 quickly is a bit strange to me. Mm -hmm. Keep on thinking. Because bishop a4, we also did not find the defense for black yet. I mean, so it's... It's 
Yeah. I'm still favoring bishop a4. I mean, not. Um, I mean, if uh, if I had the game, I would play bishop a4 for sure. Mm -hmm. I don't see any other active ideas. No. Maybe it's a passive idea. Okay, we can't stay forever, but <laughs> 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 not bishop h6. Uh, yeah, well, I still think that bishop a4 is very strong. I mean, maybe, well, maybe black can play bishop d5, but ah, here, as you see again, it, it mounts, it mounts. So there's also no obvious defense to bishop a4. Mm -mm. Ah, maybe uh, black can play queen f7. Oh, yes. <laughs> this is probably the. Yeah, this is the defense. I also just saw it, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, then it's not so clear. Okay, I see. Then bishop a4 is not so clever. And there's really much stronger move, but. Hmm. There is something. Mm -hmm. I want to find it. <laughs> Okay. Now I'm like you. <laughs> I can't move on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one more minute. Okay, thank you. <laughs> it's sad that it's not before. I mean... There are funny moves that white is probably better, but <coughs> like knight takes a5, and the knight a5 to play b4, but it's hard to believe that it's totally winning. We try, yes. I think it's playable, but <laughs> <laughs> not so much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this was not the move. Sorry, <laughs> Stefan. I mean, we can move any move here and then see which one is the right one. I mean, white can play knight, and the move that I considered was knight to e5, but um, also probably somewhat better for white, but... Also not also happy. No, it's also all totally unlogical. And bishop b3, we looked already. Maybe this is the more natural... It's okay, but mm -hmm. also not the right move. What else to try? Rook d1 is stupid, and bishop h6. There's mm -hmm. probably no difference between g5 or f4. And anyway, bishop h6 was played now. Yeah, so I don't think that any move with the bishop is the right one. Well, I mean, move like bishop f4 looks nice, but it's hard to believe it's totally winning. Bishop f4. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, white is better after. <laughs> after most normal moves, white is better, but uh, uh, clearly better, but it's not winning. Yeah. No, we don't see mm. the winning attempt. Okay. Ah, sorry for so that. So let's just get, let's go to the final position of the game once more, bishop h6, because of course also for the tournament, very crucial game, I think. How is this position now? But that now the engine agrees that bishop h6 is the right move. Oh See? Okay. Now it's plus 3. Mm -hmm. oh okay, engine so is just, mm -hmm. yeah, just very sleepy. Yeah, yeah, just the engine is <laughs> misleading us. Okay. Yeah, Ooh. so probably Maria played it very well, I mean. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, B4 maybe was a bit stronger than knight C4, but here... Um, Plus 3 is mm. still fine. Okay, but okay. we didn't see the right move after rook E8. It probably must be rook A1, or what do you think? Mm -hmm. I was thinking now to play bishop A4, but probably again... Yeah, now bishop A4, because the pin is even terrible now. Now it's much stronger, because the rook is in E8. Now with the queen of seven, I can just take in c6 and then... Okay. And she played rook to d8. Yeah, probably for this reason. Makes sense. Yeah, hot game. That's good for Maria, she's got enough time, imagine it. Now I have only very little time with white, this would be depressing, not, not being able to calculate, because now, after bishop a4, you still have queen f7 like before. <coughs> I think so, at least. <coughs> Sorry, it starts again. Right. Sometimes it is a bit cold, dry, dry air. Then I start sneezing, I'm sorry. Bishop G5, maybe, or... <laughs> <laughs> Bishop G5, Rook E8. There are many interesting moves. Bishop B3. Let's try bishop e3. Yeah, bishop e3 is a good candidate, and I thought only move is. Oh, yeah. Oh, bishop e3 now, see, because uh, at first I thought bishop f7, but then we play rook a1, and the queen has no good move then. Nice. Now it has to go to c8, and this looks great. And this not a working? Bishop d6? Ooh, it looks... Yeah, but now bishop a4, finally my favorite move. <laughs> killing. Finally, yeah, and if I have to go to c8, then... Ah. I don't know why, but somehow black is totally disorganized. Still, you have to find the killing move, but uh, maybe now some, uh, some nice stuff. Knight b6, for example. Mm. What about knight b6? Brilliant. Yes, the engine likes it. And if black retakes, just to show the variation. Yes. Bishop takes f7. And black probably can't retake because after queen c4. Mm -hmm. I guess there will be some mate here, hopefully. And now we see why bishop mm -hmm. on h6 mm -hmm. is so nice. Why black can still play king f6 and <laughs> hope for the best. But probably this will be some rook takes... Uh, but then the knight the can take. Oh. Well, then it's again king f7, but. Yeah, yeah. Just in the right moment. I well, want the right track, but it must be admitted in a tournament game. Now, if you don't see the, the follow up, then uh, you have the feeling it must be winning, but um, there must be mate, but you're a piece down. So it's. <laughs> then rook d8, mm. does the knight d8. Maybe then something like queen g8 or um, yeah, rook d8 and um, took. Um, mm -hmm. You're yeah, better with the mouse here. Knight takes. Knight has to take. Oh, let's see, queen g8. It's terrible threats. 
made in free. Ah, yes. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a nice variation, no? Yes. Nice. Ah, beautiful. Okay. So we have some nice ideas here for Maria. But let's have a look at the other games. For example, here, Anna against Elisabeth. Oh, lots happen. Yes, you have to rook g1 because uh, basically maybe by negative selection because all other ideas we didn't like. She was bravely castled short. Mm -hmm. Even though white does have the option even either now or she played one move later, g4. Queen of two. Yeah, queen of two does have the drawback that black can go b5 like yeah. in the game because before we said um, if black instead of castling plays b5, then always there's this <coughs> positional problem. While now in the game, with the queen on f2, black can go b5. I mean, it's not a big deal, maybe, but. I no. wouldn't allow it for a wolf fight. Yeah, probably not. And after g4, now probably the black idea is not to take here, but just to keep the tension, because if white takes here, then black can take with the knight and stabilize, at least for some time. Yeah, and after rook fb8, this interesting move is protecting here, and now the pawns might be might be marching against the white king. So now it will be very sharp, and uh, now I like it better for black then. Yeah, now the king side is closed, so I think c3. c3? Isn't this only helping black? I don't know, I don't like the white strategy very much here, even though the computer engine still gives some slight white advantage, but <laughs> but uh, as I said, I'm not expert in these lines, maybe it's brilliant. Yeah, A5. Mm -hmm. So I think now I would slowly prefer black. Okay, but still white can put a knight to E4 and hope that um, black can't open lines against the white king, and maybe it's not so, yeah, knight e2. Mm -hmm. Knight b6 is coming. Yeah, exactly, knight e4. <coughs> knight c4 and take. Mm -hmm. Oh well, yeah, queen of one is interesting, because after changing queens again, then the position of the kings is not so important anymore, and then white might have some positional advantage, because the knight is very strong. Interesting. Why A4? Why not Queen Z7 and try to attack with B4 later? Yeah, well, I mean, Queen C7 looks well, maybe it just takes away the square of. Um, okay, maybe Queen Z. Yeah, but also not so easy that mm -hmm. D6 pawn is hanging. Yeah. Yeah, I also would prefer with black to keep the queens here, I must say. Or maybe white will attack with f4. I mean, it's now it's the question of the b4. We should be ready to play c4. Yeah, but I mean, white can play a prophylactic move like rook c1. Or we can try to play more active um, with f4 directly, which does involve some risk, but probably black should take it away because it will allow f5. Is mm. I would take. And hope no. that d6 is not too weak. I would take with the queen, with the idea to put my bishop to d4. And No, probably b4, and then, then it gets very sharp. Ah, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh -huh. now I see the game. Uh, the idea of the game here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just look what happened because this she played a3, mm -hmm. and then she decided to exchange queens mm -hmm. by her own. 
interesting. And now rook c8. Hmm. I was thinking that this endgame is better for white. Yeah, but the white structure on the um <coughs> on the long on the on the queen side, I mean now king side for white. With a three b two c three. It's not very nice. And white the only <coughs> the only pawn lever, uh, serious pawn lever white has is f four. And after black changes, it's not clear well how much it achieves. Yeah, but still, I would think white is somewhat better here. Because I don't see an active plan for black, I mean... It's also not so easy to play f4. If I take and then rook e7 here, knight bishop, mm -hmm. they're not so well placed. Yeah, but I can retake, it, uh, retake with the bishop. And then double myself on Elan. You can Doesn't try, yes. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Maybe just now F4. Engine doesn't like it, but. No. Maybe just Rook D7, or maybe there's some more active option, but. Oh, this is probably roughly equal, I don't know. Okay, but I think they're even more exciting games. <laughs> 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 okay, <laughs> if so. you say so. Maybe you like this game between Nana and Alina. Mm -hmm. Queen Z2, yeah, and A4. <coughs> yeah, 98 is also a typical move now. Mm -hmm. And now this you see the idea of this H3 system to play G4 prophylactic. But anyway, black plays F5 and now it gets sharp because... Um, ah, this is interesting. Okay, and he takes F. It's an inter interesting reply. It's possible. Just saying for black that F4 is not a threat. Because then you take on, I uh, just maybe can show the variation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here, you mean? Mm -hmm. um, or what? What no, do you mean? Uh, F4. Oh, you mean F4. Oh, I thought taking. Yeah, okay. and of course, just taking C5 and. Yeah. And now maybe first play bishop D3 and. And now white has a very nice attack on the white squares. And black has no attack at all. I mean, so this. Is the idea of <coughs> of the white move order? Mm -hmm. Yeah, plus three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, very this beautiful. Just yeah, yeah. I mean, this just demonstrates. I mean, of course, ridiculous black play. This move is <laughs> a big blunder. <laughs> but just to understand, if you don't know the structure, I think it's important. Yeah, it's good to know. Yeah, because now it's not s not so easy for black. Of black, of course, doesn't want to take like this because then H seven. Ooh. Mm -hmm. And because here, normally you would, in this position, it's interesting, normally you would play automatic GF, but I mean, then um, it's not so clear. Because after GF and then and then EF, then of course black gets some, some very active play here. But um, EF is interesting. Mm -hmm. And Queen H4, and I think this is the best strategy for black here to keep the tension. Just waiting for white to change in f5. And of course, white doesn't want to do it because in a moment white change in f5, then this bishop will become very strong. Yes. So now white played rook d f1. Is the idea to play f4? Or maybe also to protect f2 in some lines. Yeah, this is a really hot, hot King's Indian position. Very difficult for both sides now to um, to move. I mean, you can move, but uh, to find a move that improves your position, this is the. <laughs> <laughs> this also shown by the next moves. Black just plays king h8, white plays king b1, some prophylactic king moves. Look, a6. A6? Yeah, it happens sometimes. In some moment, the rook can switch to b6. and. 
But in this position. Well, I mean, but um, it's the question what to do with blank. It's not so easy. You don't want to take on g4. You don't want to play f4. And if you play <laughs> e4, then probably you will lose the pawn. But still, maybe e4 is... Um, I think I would still think about e4 with black, even though it will lose your pawn, probably. Someone take and then later, like yeah, someone, not now. But then, but then the bishop on g7 will become very strong, yeah. even if you win a pawn in e4, then. Mm -hmm. I mean, now white can take on c5 and f5, and but also it will activate the black pieces. And Yeah. Yeah, maybe white can play bishop g4 now then. First and. Yeah, but still. Oh no, the computer. Like is it's a blunder maybe with e3. No, so take it back. <laughs> <laughs> probably white yeah. must. Probably yeah, white. Yeah, true. <laughs> no matter, so still white can take in f5, but it seems after e d that it's good for black. Then. Mm -hmm. Okay, but probably white has to take in e4. And yes. Like d takes e4. Um, no. Uh, C takes e, uh, yeah, or not D takes e4 is also okay. And then white can play next move bishop d3 and it's just a pawn up, but on the other hand, the bishop on g7 is very strong. So it's yeah. like some reasonable counterplay for black. A rook a6 also think is a bit funny move. I'm not so happy with this move. The engine neither. And no, g5 five. happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now it's playing against Ooh. the black queen. That might be the problem. Yeah, some light f3 threats. What can black do now? Yeah, but I can imagine that Alina was maybe surprised by g5 because positionally it's not a very good move, but uh, um, but the concrete problem with the queen is very unpleasant. And sometimes you forget about um, concrete moves if they are positionally not. Um, just from general for general strategic strategic principles, um, um, they are not so good. But here with the black queen on h4, it's a special case because just this threat of knight f3. If black just show uh, any move, I don't know, just to show the threat. Now knight f3. And the black queen um, has to go to h5, and then knight takes e5, and it's good. And of course, this total disaster. So after g5. E4 for black? Yeah, probably now black must e play E4. Um. But it seems that, it's now, that now there is some drawback because the engine... I think there's absolutely no choice. Black must play E4. Mm -hmm. Whatever happens now. I mean, maybe white can play F3 now. I'm also thinking about someone f4 and bishop f2. I mean, not right now because f4 is then also hanging, but no, just not having not some really ideas. It's not really hanging, also. Um, you cannot take an f4 because of the Oh, yeah, bishop takes taking c5. on c5. Yeah, f4 is so also interesting. Four immediately. Yeah, engine likes mm -hmm. it. Yeah. yeah, something with the f pawn, f3 or f4. That's also interesting. But I think f4 has more threats. Yeah, no, if, uh, yeah. I mean, f4 is a, is a tactical solution. If if, um, if there's no way to um, defend against bishop f2, then it's very strong. Hmm. But we don't see anything. Hmm. Yeah, I think this went wrong for Alina, but this is. What should we do now? Offer a draw, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> or lose on time. Huh? Against timid <laughs> opponents. <laughs> it might help. Yeah, this looks bad for black. But it's quite typical for King's Indian. I mean, black at first sight played lots of reasonable moves, but out of a sudden is totally lost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think he had to play e4 one move before then. What, uh, what was the difference if you go one move back? Yes. Here, After e4. You mean g5? Then we yeah, yeah, have here we still have f4. Yeah, um, f4. Mm -hmm. 
Nice idea played by Nana. Mm -hmm. And Alina went for F F4 right now. Yeah, I think it's the only chance. It's absolutely not a move she wants to play from a posi positional point of view. And even here, not F3 now might be possible. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Have this is very this is quite tactical now. And and knight takes e5 and because black later has bishop f5 somehow regaining the queen, so maybe it's not it's not so clear then. Yeah, you can just play bishop takes e5 now. Bishop f5. That was too much hanging. And now takes an f5, takes an c5, and takes an e8 and, and she is up then. Yeah. I mean okay, now it's not working. But still, not if three was. Um, Thank you. Maybe yes. Yeah, maybe this is not so clear. There must be something better for white. Yeah. Yeah, but anyway, this was the old line. I mean, um, yeah, yeah. But I mean, it just shows this was relatively better for black then. Yeah, here it says plus three. Mm -hmm. so instead of <laughs> knight f three, there must be something else. Ah, yeah, we're in the game position. Yeah. Mm, sorry. Yeah, yeah, we have to. Or position. maybe just first take in c five. And I also think that first take yeah, in yeah, c five. No, of course. I just was and looking for alternatives. No. Yes. And now this is killing because mm -hmm. yeah, no. the bishop mm -hmm. is hanging. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Oh, of course, this is the simple solution. Mm -hmm. Bishop c5 and knight f3, this is the. Okay. Phew. Completely winning position for mm -hmm. Nana. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure that she will find this. This is the king's Indian fate. But g5, uh, this was a nice idea how she played it. First, e takes f5 and keeping the tension. Mm -hmm. And then to play out of a sudden after queen h4, which turned out that the black queen has fallen into a deadly trap, basically. And then so out of a sudden to play g5. Mm -hmm. Very beautiful. It's a good, good recommendation for the h4, g, h4 g, g4 system. So before we will have a break... Ah, break, good idea. <laughs> 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 Just quickly have a look at the positions right now. Yeah, it's a Maria game board. I want to see. Okay, you... Okay. This game so yeah, is here also interesting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, between Anna and Elisabeth, it still looks equal. Then we have this interesting game here. Ah, what happened? What happened? It was. Bishop. I should play bishop g5. G it was bishop b3, bishop d5. But bishop b3 was not the best move, no. no please go back. So here. You said rook 81. No, we were also discussing this move. First bishop b3 and then ah, okay. rook d1. Ah, okay. so, so this is still fine, mm -hmm. but after bishop d5, there seems to be a killer. Rook a d1, maybe. Also knight e5. No. No, knight e5. Hm. Rook a d1. Okay, it's yeah. it's strong enough. Maybe yeah. Queen Queen F seven. Maybe I can simply uh, take in D five and. Rook D five and now. Knight D three maybe and. Yeah, somewhere with the knight. Here. Oh, maybe Knight E five, or do we lose too much material? I'm not sure. Or maybe it's too much material for the queen, although still, I guess it must be clearly better for white, but maybe it's not entirely clear here. Mm. Okay, but this would be a strong move. Bishop g5 is... Yeah, <laughs> Alexandra <laughs> survives everything. Yeah. <laughs> but let's maybe just uh, short uh, go back in this, this variation. Yes. 
Yeah, just bishop g5, I don't like. I think rook 81 must be the right move then. Now we said queen f7, probably is the only move. And I wonder what's the strongest. It looks somehow like rook takes d5, no? Or maybe now knight e5. No, but then black can take and stabilize with c6, maybe. Now there must be the absolute crusher. Even somebody knight takes a5 here. And <laughs> ah, <there's> so, many <laughs> <laughs> so many nice moves. <laughs> Yeah, but rook takes d5 looked good. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. no, this move was right, yeah. The rook. And now was the question, what's the best square for the for the knight? Or maybe a move like, okay, but black can give back the exchange on, on b3. This is what I don't like so much, but, but it seems it's totally winning. As, as I'm feeling it's totally winning, but it's... Um, why not here? You mean because yeah, of, of bishop course. taking? Yeah, bishop takes and then mm. black can give back the exchange on um yeah, on that's b3. That's this, is this is what I don't like so I much. I was hoping for rook taking here and then. Mm -hmm. But uh, bishop taking. Maybe a move like queen f3 to, to increase the pressure. Because then after rook b3, a, b, then black still is in a terrible position. Mm hmm. White advantage, but it's not um, clear advantage, but it's not a killer. Wow, oh, it gives you oh, plus, plus four. Plus four. <laughs> Why is the killer again? So as usual, this engine is torturing us. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because black can give back the exchange on b3. This is um, it's hard to see it. I'm getting more and more doubts in the in the engine whether this is because um <laughs> <laughs> here also there are not so many moves. Hmm. It's interesting um, concerning the theory. I think uh, Carlson or somebody said that uh, concerning this typical this um, cheating problem, that would be enough for him uh, if the engine shows him um, there is something. He does not even have to know the move, but if the engine shows like this, plus must be plus four, then it's very easy for a good player to find. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> to find the what to <laughs> see right now? Maybe he thinks we are not good enough. <laughs> yeah, the engi engine is giggling. <laughs> These humans are so stupid. Well, if I would analyze the game over the board, I would think that probably this was, um, this rook takes d5 was not the right idea. But if the mm. engine shows <laughs> the winning, then it's... In this game, we don't find all these moves, so I mm -hmm. don't know. But Maria also doesn't. Mm -hmm. So it's not so easy. I think it's some move with the knight. Good knight. <laughs> Good knight, <laughs> yes, this move. <laughs> I mean, we can go for any move. Yeah, okay, knight e3, but black takes and we're... Yeah, we didn't like Maybe it's just positionally winning for white. I mean, with, with the weak black squares, maybe just knight e3. Yeah, but there is something better. Did we try knight e3? Yes, we did. Oh, okay. 
And Engine was not satisfied with this move. No, but still it's clear advantage. <laughs> oh, is he taking this threat? Mm. This is annoying. But still, let's, let's uh, give a bit deeper look to knight e3. Uh, okay, black has probably to take. So rook takes. Probably rook takes b3. Or White is better, but well it's not much. Okay, I don't know. So let's, let's take a last look before the break at the game position. Yeah, but the problem here is that she missed the move f4 with the threat queen taking on h3. Oh my god. <laughs> Checkmate. And now this is not so great Ooh. anymore. King h2, f3, Ooh. and take. <laughs> Crazy. Okay, this is quite a change Alexandra survives <laughs> another game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and now it's equal. <laughs> okay, but still in this position anything can happen. So yeah, 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 for sure. But this also mm -hmm. means that Alexandra has chances to win again. Absolutely. And before it was completely lost. Okay, but definitely you are there to play B4. Let's play B4 before. <laughs> and um, yeah. this was totally winning yeah, just without any question marks. Here, instead of knight C4, just yes, B4. Very this nice. was easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is just winning a piece. I mean, there is still this move plus six. We just mm. don't know. <laughs> 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 yeah, but I don't believe in this engine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And after uh. knight knight c4, there still was a clear advantage. Yeah. She played well, but mm. then she yeah. needed to play rook a to d1. Yeah, here yeah, obviously. And it's oh. still killing. Yeah, yeah, this was yeah, a strong yeah. moment to play bishop b3. Yeah, no, no, yeah. it was also okay. Was it okay? Yeah, this was okay. And then after bishop d5, now she needs to play rook a to d1. Yeah, yes. of course. And not bishop g5. Because it's after bishop g5, she underestimated f4, f3. Or well she, I guess, mm -hmm. missed it completely. Yeah, but we didn't see the refutation of queen f7. I thought we did. <laughs> Sure, I thought we did. Oh, yeah, that was the point where we took here and then took. Yeah, yeah, as you and see. And, and that's the point <laughs> where we <laughs> didn't know <laughs> what to play. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I say. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally winning. Ach, come on, it must be some knight move. Don't you think so? Mm, yes, but if it's not knight e3 and not knight e5, then... And this is, mm -hmm. of course, bad. <laughs> we can try any move right now. This is also not good. <laughs> I just want to <laughs> find this move. <laughs> okay, that was pretty sure that these moves aren't correct. What else? Rook D1, just okay, take Okay, just, just for once, I look in my, uh, my engine on my handy. <laughs> 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 just for once. <laughs> now he's cheating with his phone. <laughs> <laughs> Disqualified. <laughs> Don't tell the arbiters. <laughs> <laughs> and especially don't tell Carlsen, <laughs> because <laughs> he thought that everyone would find the solution when he knows that Engine and says and it's winning. And a strong player. So and a strong <laughs> player, yeah, yeah. So I guess we are not strong enough. Queen of Free was also a nice idea from you, but it's not a correct move. Ah, oh, but you see my engine does... Uh, Rook D1. It's also, of course, not the move. I'm trying every move. I really have no idea. Well ah. The engine of the of the rook eighty one bishop queen f seven now gives some some advantage. This engine here is also not very strong. Just gives plus one one point five. Okay, so not this not, not taking d five. Uh huh. So. It Good gives up the rook d5, rook d5. Now it gives bishop a4, which is somehow crazy. Uh -huh. Wow. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is the move <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah, we found <laughs> it. <laughs> but this is very strange. It's absolutely okay. uh, unhuman to, to leave this diagonal. <laughs> okay, this is just crazy. 
Und dann Knight E7 to play Knight E5. And okay, so just to make space for this Knight here. Yeah, but okay, it's this is completely crazy. And now you play with the exchange down. This is absolutely not. This like is this. insane. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is not but a also human it, chess it game. It just gives something like plus 1.8 or 1.9 mm -hmm. here, not, not plus 5 or 6. And now since we are already cheating and everything is lost, uh, can we have a quick look after f5? If b4 is the best move on your mobile phone engine or... But it's very... No, this is just this on the chess 64, but it's not very good. The engine. You mean chess 24? Yeah, 24. 64, oh, 64 is also nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's the concurrence. <laughs> the concurrence. With a better engine, right? No, but F4 is surely winning totally. Huh? What do you mean? After F5? Mm -hmm. Is he also going for B4? Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Good. Now we know that the engine is not strong enough. Ah, but uh, last, before we make the break, let's mm -hmm. look at this Conero game. Was oh, it's totally winning now against... Um, Yeah, here this one. Oh yeah. Rook F E one. Queen D eight. Queen D eight. Yeah. yeah, this is exactly like the Giri game somehow. <laughs> take and mm -hmm. take. Exactly like the Giri game. Really? Hundred percent? I don't know what's exactly the game, but it's <laughs> very close. And take. Mm. But I'm not so hundred percent sure. No, wait, 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 wait. There, there was, was something some, there better. Was some, yeah, because before I think it was really winning for white. But not knight eg5 is also thought is the only idea. Well, there's also the idea to go h4 and then knight eg5. This can be also very strong. Mm -hmm. h4 is also interesting. But... Um, No, it's not so convincing. Okay, but now EG5 also doesn't like it. <laughs> <I don't know laughs> this. Yeah, but this this engine is a bit hysteric. It's <laughs> over <laughs> <laughs> exaggerating somehow. <laughs> Maybe there's some tricks with D5 with a weak back row or something. I also would think to knight eg5 is the move here. Okay, let's look. I mean, I don't know. Hmm. But taking on a free. What's the idea right now? Well, there's several ideas. So it's either rook. I know, rook e8, uh, why this has had some back row issues. Well, probably just queen takes f3 must be the idea, mm -hmm. of course. And this looks like a very dangerous attack, doesn't it? Yes. Because rook takes e4 doesn't work because of rook e8, and f takes e6 also is made in two moves. It's bishop e6 and queen h5. And well, that's a strong threat of rook, rook e8 winning instantly. Knight c6. Also, not really, then also then taking then here. Then, yeah, but then rook takes take, e8. Take, 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 and mm. take everything. That's oh. Ah, oh, queen, Maybe queen f8. f8. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was just wanted to propose. Yeah. That is probably the only defense. Yeah, right. Okay. Okay, but let's now go to the break. Yeah, so many crazy <laughs> games, but mm -hmm. we need to go into a break right now. Otherwise, we miss this <laughs> very interesting time travel period. Oh, yes. So, see you anytime. <laughs> I'm joined by Arkady Dvarkovic, uh, President of the International Chess Federation. Welcome to Munich, Arkady. Thank you. I'm happy to be back uh, to Munich, uh, where we have uh, 
uh, the Women Grand Prix uh, exciting tournament with some of the best uh, ladies chess players. Okay, so we'll talk about the tournaments in a, in a minute. But first of all, Turkey is suffering severe consequences due to the catastrophic earthquakes, also Syria, as you know. It's a very active chess federation that's organized great events and supports chess continuously. What message would you like to send over to convey to those of our friends over there, Arkady? I, I personally and uh, FIDE as an institution um, issued uh, a statement um, right, uh, right after we learned about the news uh, from Turkey and uh, Syria uh, that uh, we are uh, in solidarity with the people of these two countries, with families uh, who lost uh, their um, uh, uh, relatives, um, including kids, uh, and uh, our chess community uh, has losses um, uh, as well, as far as we uh, know, uh, and we uh, expressed uh, our uh, commitment uh, to uh, provide uh, any necessary help when we will find out how and uh, to do it and what uh, is needed, uh, when we will be sure that it will deliver to uh, people in need, uh, but we are uh, ready for this at any time. And uh, we also called our national federations uh, uh, to donate uh, whatever is needed um, uh, to help uh, uh, those families. Oh, it's a very tragic um, situation. So even though you, you have a very tight schedule as FIDE president, you found time to come to the Women's Grand Prix here in, in Munich. And uh, as we saw last night in the charity gala, sponsors are appreciating your presence at the event. So my question is, is the Women's Grand Prix consolidated as a two-year event, or are there plans to modify the road to the candidate structure as in the open section? How do you see the women's tournaments in the well, future? As, as compared to the open section, there are not so many uh, tournaments uh, for women. Uh, and that's why we decided to uh, keep uh, Grand Prix Series uh, to provide uh, more opportunities uh, for uh, ladies to compete uh, directly and uh, uh, to have a chance uh, to get uh, spots in the candidate tournaments through uh, uh, real tournaments. Um, uh, and uh, we do believe that unless we'll have more private women tournaments, we should keep uh, it uh, uh, like that. Uh, of course, it requires uh, uh, some thinking uh, and um, uh, some decisions uh, regarding how many spots we uh, take from um, uh, various uh, routes, uh, including World Cup, uh, uh, Grand Suisse, uh, Grand Prix by rating, uh, uh, whether we will establish the same system as an open um, with uh, FIDE circuit, uh, we will see. But uh, for, for the time being, we believe that the Women Grand Prix is an important um, uh, route uh, so that that uh, more ladies can uh, directly compete for the okay. title. That's very reassuring for the, for the women's chess. Uh, you've probably noticed that recently there's been a debate in social media about um, classical chess being phasing out. Okay, sparked in part through comments by Carlsen and Caruana and um, also all these uh, events online. Where do you see classical chess in the future amidst all these rapid and blitz online Events. Could you could you squash these rumors that classical chess is not phasing out, please? Well, we can certainly uh, see the trend towards uh, um, uh, towards chess being more um, uh, rapid uh, and uh, uh, more games uh, during uh, same days. Uh, same uh, same days, uh, and that's why we we do believe that uh, uh, there is a case for uh, more uh, rapid and blitz uh, tournaments in general. Uh, but it doesn't mean that it should substitute um, the classical uh, events. Uh, well, the time control for classical events should be a bit shorter, uh, uh, of course, is, uh, uh, is uh, in the discussion, uh, and we will continue the discussion with all stakeholders, including uh, in particular chess players, uh, media uh, partners. Uh, uh, but again, it's not about uh, getting rid of classics. Uh, it's about uh, the uh, time control that we should use um, in the future uh, for uh, major classical tournaments uh, to keep chess uh, small smart game, not just uh, a game where you, uh, uh, you do more physical activity playing by hands, not, not with your brain. So a follow-up follow -up question to this uh, first question. Where do you think is the sweet spot for classical time control? Maybe 60-30, around that uh, range? All kind of ideas. Um, uh, some people believe that we should go uh, down to uh, one hour for each player um, uh, per game. Uh, now we have at least two hours uh, for top players. We, ha we, have, it, uh, we have one hour for uh, low-rated um, uh, uh, players already, like be below 1800, as far as I remember. Uh, uh, so I, I don't think that it sh should be that radical. Um, uh, we should um, have uh, sufficient time for players to think. Uh, uh, so it's somewhere in the middle. But where in the middle, I don't know. Uh, uh, again, we'll have um, a broad discussion with all stakeholders, and we will present a few, uh, a few options. Um, 
You've probably seen the video that's circulating now where you were um, watching the charity game after the game had finished with a lot of interest. Later on, we carried on playing the game. Do you actually miss playing chess tournaments? Uh, because, because I noticed that you were very interested no, in I the didn't, game. I didn't play any serious tournaments uh, since I was a student, uh, so I cannot say that I miss uh, playing. Uh, but uh, of course, I, uh, I'm struggling to find time to play even occasionally. Uh, I play mostly in the internet, so uh, having a chance to play over the board, even with big uh, uh, chess set, uh, is uh, uh, it's just exciting, it's just fun, uh, and yesterday we had fun with uh, some uh, good players, and the position itself was very interesting. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> so my last question, I've heard that you're studying Spanish now, so would you like to send a message to all our Latin American and Spanish fans? <laughs> ¿Quieres mandar un pequeño mensaje a todos nuestros seguidores? I, I, pro, I promise to do it uh, uh, when I come to the region, uh, for sure, and it's going to be soon, in April. Uh, uh, so, uh, now I, I'm at the uh, like right pass, I would say. So, hasta mañana. Okay. <laughs> Muchas gracias. Muchísimas gracias. Thanks very much, Arkady. Möchten Sie auf innovative Weise die Qualität Ihrer Entscheidungen verbessern? die besten Strategien der Schachgroßmeister nutzen, auch wenn sie selbst vielleicht kein Schachspieler, keine Schachspielerin sind, sich vor schwerwiegenden Planungsfehlern schützen, ihre Intuition bestmöglich in ihren Planungs- und Entscheidungsprozess einfließen lassen. Oder suchen Sie einfach einen inspirierenden Keynote-Vortrag für Ihre nächste Veranstaltung. Dann haben Sie viel gemeinsam mit Unternehmen wie Lufthansa Cargo, wie BMW, wie E.ON oder der Bayerischen Staatskanzlei. Überall dort konnte ich schon in Form von Vorträgen oder Workshops die wichtigsten Konzepte und Ideen unseres Strategiemodells Königsplan vermitteln. Hat Sie das neugierig gemacht? Dann freue ich mich auf Ihre Anfrage. Viele Informationen sind auch auf unserer Homepage www.königsplan.com zu finden. Kinder in sozialen Brennpunkten haben es besonders schwer. Sie müssen oft sowohl mit sprachlichen als auch häuslichen Problemen kämpfen. Wenn vielen von ihnen keine erfolgreiche schulische Karriere gelingt und sie später beruflich abgehängt sind, wird das zu einem großen gesellschaftlichen Problem und birgt enorme Gefahren für uns alle. Wir glauben, dass unser Schachtraining nach allen Erfahrungen der letzten 15 Jahre mit bis zu 10.000 geförderten Grundschulkindern ein wunderbares und innovatives Mittel ist, um hiergegen zu steuern. Unser Königsplan für Kinder fördert auf spielerische Weise. Die Kinder lernen, sich besser zu konzentrieren, sie werden kreativer und sie erleben, wie man vielfältige Probleme flexibel löst. All dies ist kein theoretischer Stoff, sondern wirkt sich unmittelbar positiv auf die schulische Entwicklung aus. Vor allem zeigen wir diesen Kindern, dass wir an sie glauben und geben damit den Glauben an sich selbst. Und das ist die allerwichtigste Gabe für ihre weitere Entwicklung. Um all dies fortzusetzen, benötigen wir Ihre Unterstützung. Mit 150 Euro können Sie ein Grundschulkind über ein ganzes Jahr hinweg fördern. Unsere Personalkosten werden von unserem Stiftungsgründer Roman Kohlig getragen, sodass Ihre Spende voll und ganz in diese wichtigen Projekte fließt. Dafür im Namen der Münchner Schachstiftung und natürlich unserer Schachkinder ein ganz großes Dankeschön an Sie.
Welcome back. We have so <laughs> many exciting fighting games <laughs> right now. A lot of attacking. And yeah, engine is going crazy. We are going <laughs> crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so let's have the a look. The players are going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> and we have time travel period already. And we already have a draw. Just have a quick look at this. Like Stefan oh. said, boring game. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so here between Anna and Elisabeth, knight e4 and then after rook c4, they agree to a draw. And yeah. No, so the opening agree. was was far from uh, far from boring, but now just the um, relatively with the other games. Now that's a very tough position, difficult to do anything for one of um, of the players. So I mean, okay, I can understand they made a draw, but there are much more interesting games mm -hmm. now. The so most interesting game being this one, yes, after Rook. Because of the bishop, when I just went out into the break and looked at the monitor, out of a sudden I thought that now the move Rook H6 would be totally crushing for black. Funny part is that Ancient thinks this is still a draw, but <laughs> we don't see any move. Just to show some ideas. Well, black must take, no? Um. So if you take, then there's check. Mm -hmm here and if the king is moving here then we can h6 check it first g6 check ah i thought i can give check on h5 ah, okay there's the bishop still on uh, ah sorry but isn't it winning when we take here yeah probably but i thought uh, yeah no and you see now the engine mm -hmm. yeah engine is now mm. also satisfied Just yeah bishop take takes f7 yes no, this <laughs> <laughs> no uh, wait a this moment. not no, queen of a no, check, get... No, no, but not the bishop queen? take. Mm. Not bishop takes f7. Uh, uh, rook c6. Yeah, for example. Oh no, but not, not bishop takes f7. But is it rook c6 and then also... But let's be more systematic. Where we be, 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 not, not bishop takes f7 in this position, we have to look for more. Yeah, yeah. I was sure this is winning for white, but. Um, but in fact, um, first queen h6 check probably. Is Okay, what's about queen h6 check first? Okay. Okay, now. Um, rook e6. Yeah, but then um, rook takes c4 is the problem. Yeah, too slow. Mm -hmm. oh, one feels this is totally winning for white, but it's... Um, What is the crusher here? Well, we can play rook e5, but then rook takes c4, there's no mate. Hmm. Embarrassing. This must be so short. This also, the computer shows totally winning, I think, even mate. Something with bishop takes f7 and so bishop f7 and rook e6. I know that's rook c1, we are made. I'm totally blinded, I'm really sorry. There are not so many moves now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. 
Ha. <lacht> <lacht> so simpel. Das ist always mhm. easy to miss. Mhm. Ja, das wird schon very nice. Switch of diagonal and then it's over. Ach, also happy. Mhm. I finally <lacht> found something. <lacht> very good. Okay, yeah, so I think this is just a mistake mm. from the computer, but mm. of course right now he understands it's mm -hmm. made in 19 moves. After mm -hmm. we found Bishop d3, mm -hmm. after our great discovery, also the engine discovered. Yeah, it's joint venture. First we found rook h6 and then bishop d3 to, uh, to prove, so to say. Uh, uh, yeah, would have been yeah, but such I was a nice ending. I was so uh, focused on the f7 square that I totally forgot about bishop mm. d3. Seems that Humpy also couldn't find mm -hmm. it because she didn't have so much time left. So she mm -hmm. had to make a move. But mm -hmm. this would have been such a great move and mm -hmm. such a beautiful end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Wow, I love this move. Okay, what happened in the game? Taking queen of eight, yeah? Mm -hmm. Rookie, mm -hmm. take... And now take on f7. Mm -hmm. Nice. Take, take, and take. Take. <laughs> it's, it's so interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. A5. Now the rook wants to mm -hmm. escape someone. So B5. Rook A7 and take. Mm -hmm. Wow, <laughs> it's so <laughs> fascinating. Yeah, but maybe not so fascinating anymore now after B6 and then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, B6 was played. Yeah. Yeah, that's a pity. Oh, it would have been such a nice it's ending. The lost, the lost brilliancy and now I had a small advantage, but I think objectively it should be drawn now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a pity. That's really sad. Mm -hmm. I was looking for some but nice such, attacking. Such absolutely classically attacking game otherwise. Yeah, it was brilliant played. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's look at some other mm. games because now it's sad, but it happens. Yeah, but thank you, Kiri, for this nice discovery mm -hmm. in this variation. That's why we were able to see such an interesting mm -hmm. game here. Unfortunately, Humpy didn't finish with this mm -hmm. nice move, Rook H6. But also, we needed some time. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, to find this to find D3. bishop d3 mm -hmm. move. Yeah, it's psychologically not so easy because you're so fixed on this f7 square. Then. Mm -hmm. Although I think as it basically the motive is known of the switch of diagonal. Yeah. I totally forget about it. I solved many uh, problems in the last time with this idea, but even today, mm -hmm. I just didn't think about it. And also the first time when I solved one of these problems, I absolutely missed this idea, just bringing the mm -hmm. bishop to the other diagonal. Okay, so let's look at all the other games. Yeah, because here it might end in a draw. Most probably. Yeah, okay, g6. And, uh, okay. Yeah, sorry to see this. But we also have an interesting game here between Zanzaya and Shongi. And here, Shongi had a big advantage, but somehow Sansaya could solve mm -hmm. many problems. But let's see if she actually could solve the problems. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Ah, it's just um, okay. running a tempo. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for the moment, black is just a pawn up. Yeah, we can't take because mm -hmm. then here. So bishop b3. Mm -hmm. Everything's okay mm -hmm. right now, right? Yeah, just the white bishop on b3 gives some compensation for the for the lost pawn. So of course very nice. And also bishop on d5, yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah. H6, back. Hmm. Knight d3, I don't know. Yeah. Well, maybe just change in f3, but probably she didn't like the fact that white can play gf and rook g1, but 
Mm -hmm. I don't think it can be so good for white. Some more black seem to have lost the track. Mm -hmm. I mean, black, black should simply change in its freedom. Thank you. Mm -hmm. From the GF and I think mm. earlier there was something better for black. Still something instead of rook e8. Is it a good idea to take this bishop here? Yeah, that's what I just thought about. Okay. Idea was, if I take well, here, takes here, then then I takes here. But then white loses. It doesn't lose a piece. Or maybe then it's after queen b3, bishop e5, there's rook e5 in the end. But then it's <coughs> then it's not so clear. Okay. Yeah. Works out for white. So this is not the right move. After bishop takes f three, how does white retake a probably with the queen? No, this is then f seven gets too weak. Yes. No, I don't like this. What did you play, in fact? Um, yeah, rook e8. I mean rook it looks e8. Normal, um. Yeah, it's a normal move. I was just mm -hmm. thinking if there is something else. No, mm -hmm. oh, but I think rook e8 is, is okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now rook it's important that rook d1 doesn't work, by the way. Instead of... Um, was now C4. And there is this nice idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think so far by um, the Tan Tan played very well. Now here's maybe the moment to find a, a good move. You don't like H6? I like this move. Okay. Okay, H6. But here I think. Yeah, here we stopped before. Yes. Well, as I said, I wonder just taking an F3, I mean, but maybe it's too primitive. But this bishop here is annoying. Yeah. <coughs> I guess yeah, that's why she played mm -hmm. knight to d3, mm -hmm. moving somewhere and then mm -hmm. exchanging. I like this idea, but somehow... I think I would change an F3. No. Okay, so continue mm -hmm. yeah, taking on h6. Yeah, that's a nice idea. Mm -hmm. And especially psychologically, it's easy to play such moves if before you think you have anyway a bad position, so then um, nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. And it's a shock maybe for the opponent. Yeah, now this would be very dangerous for black. h6 hanging, knight g5 oh, so coming. This, idea. Yeah, this is very dangerous. Yeah. And important that there's no time for bishop f4 because the g6 is hanging. Mm -hmm. So I so guess that's the reason why yeah. knight d3 is not so yeah, strong. Take in f3 then. Okay. Yeah, now it just makes a lot of sense to take here. Mm -hmm. Well, the only thing is that white can take with the pawn and strengthen the center and. Um, but then king h7 maybe, and some ideas to open up later with f5 and... Mm -hmm. Okay, let's have a look. So, taking on h6. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's the final position? Bishop f4. Oh, now it gets very hot. Okay, well, let's do uh, so mm -hmm. many moves and just... Yes, take... 
<laughs> oh. Mm -hmm. But it seems that this wasn't the best move here. Okay, what I think of <laughs> mm. <laughs> <We got laughs> Yeah, practically a good mm. try for white. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Oh, but black is defending well. But what's this? Um, and and now they're just equal, equal pawns, so it's not equal again, so it's... <coughs> no, I think altogether white got good counterplay of the mm -hmm. bishop h6. And that for sure. I think that this three was a mistake, basically, because then... Yes. I guess she underestimated Bishop, H6, Bishop yeah. taking H6 or she missed it completely. Okay, and how's the final position now? Queen H6, take, take, and yeah, that's the position at the mm -hmm. moment. Well, now it looks roughly equal at first sight. And in a moment B2 is hanging, but... Knight g ah, yeah. ah, good. Now this is some counterplay. Threatening knight f6 check and... And king g7. Sansaya has only one minute left and still seven mm -hmm. moves to go. Yes, so in a moment there's no threat to taking b2 because um, maybe knight f2 to... Yes, happened. Mm -hmm. This is the most solid move just to get rid of the knights and then Bishops of different color, and the draw is very probable after the whole fireworks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very well defended by Sansai. Yeah, very good. So the opening went totally wrong, but then when it looked really badly, then. Okay, so better look to some other games because yes. it's, it's not so exciting anymore. Also, not so exciting anymore. <laughs> also, not so exciting anymore, but they are still playing. Okay, well, good. This is more interesting. Mm -hmm. So more let's move back, I think. Yeah, here we, we said that it's fine for black. Moves. Yes, I see four. I'm not sure I like knight d4, but... Um, you don't want to exchange? No. I'd rather play knight b4. And then here later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, let may or maybe to return later, but I know not d4, I'm not so sure. Okay, well, let's mm -hmm. play the next moves. Yes. Yeah, because this structure is not. Well, the basic structure, of course, is better for black, but um, now the knight can be. Well, some circum circumstances be quite nice then. I agree yeah, with you. Yeah, of course, f5 is all Dutch player. Of course, this is the move you always want. This is the Dutch spare. Mm -hmm. Take, take. Because the black bishop now is not really good. It's just a defensive piece. Yeah. Queen G2. It's strange. I thought Black should should um, should swap queens, but okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, G4. G4. Yeah, I would mm -hmm. also exchange queens. Yeah. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Still 10 moves to go and only 4 minutes for both players mm -hmm. each yeah, left. This is, this is hot stuff then. Yeah, it is. So, just to make sure we don't miss anything, have oh, a what quick look yeah, here. Yeah. So, we had f4, the nice idea from Alexander. Yeah, this was very hot. f3, take. Mm -hmm. oh, a4. Mm -hmm. A4. That's the idea. What was the last white move? Last white move was rook to d1. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well 
Okay, but if a, if a4 is a threat, then one should maybe think about it. But <coughs> okay, oh, let's look where so many moves happen then. But what to play the knight can't really move. A4, then it's weakening the B line. Cool. Okay, rook d1, a4, take, 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 take. Oh, ah, that okay. was the mm -hmm. nice idea. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Take, bishop three, to the take, ending. king f7. Hmm. What yeah. to say about this ending? I think it's roughly equal. Rook and two, uh, rook and two pawns, basically about equal bishop and, and knight. Although, in many cases, rook and two pawn can also be slightly better. But here it's a double pawn, and also white does have some weaknesses on the king side. Don't you think that this position is easier to play for black? Maybe I don't know. Yeah. I would prefer it with black. Okay. But that can be wrong, yes. <laughs> of course. Well, it depends whether white can get pawns there. Yeah, the pawns are a bit stupid, in fact. <coughs> yeah, white would have to make a choice after knight e6, f4, where to go with the king. Mm. And then also h3. Mm -hmm. I'll just move here and here. Ah, yeah. What to do with this pawn? No, black definitely is no worse. Good news for Alexandra again. Yeah, incredible. <laughs> <laughs> but very so sorry for Maria because yeah, she absolutely. had very great winning chances. Beautiful I was really position. looking forward for the interview with her. No, I'm so very <laughs> sorry, Stefan. <laughs> but it's not finished yet. No, no. H4 looks like a good idea. Mm -hmm. Although after H5, of course, it's fixed and black squares, but you can become an attacking target. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is already a draw, and we have ah, also the interesting game. Yeah, game between Nana and Alina. And she defended well with bishop f5. At, at least not losing queen immediately, but mm -hmm. still having huge problems. And here, black played rook a5 and then queen f3. But my question here is, why not queen h5? Trying to escape with the queen. Um. You mean because of taking c5? Yeah, yeah I, I'm just really scared of losing my queen, <laughs> you know? That's why yeah, I, but I want to save c5 her. But if knight c5 and knight e6, and then I think it's totally lost. Oh. But here it's also totally lost after <laughs> queen of three. I mean, what to do with no this yeah. <laughs> Ah, okay. So nothing to be done, but maybe it's still difficult for white to break through somehow. It was 96, take, take. Oh, uh -huh. Yeah, one would expect 94 instead. Yes, I did. Yeah, that's what I would have played for sure. Hmm. I don't know. Okay, queen takes a free. <coughs> It's also strange, a uh, true King's Indian player maybe would play e4 with black anyway. <laughs> at the moment now. And activate the bishop on e5. And mm -hmm. Because now the bishop is a sorry side. Yeah, very sorry for this bishop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, uh, they were repeating just to gain some time, but of course, white is not going for a draw here. Oh, the poor bishop. Yeah, this is it basically from a positional point of view, the typical king's Indian nightmare with the bad bishop against the uh, wonderful knight. Mm -hmm. Is this the last position? No, no, no but now she played rook h6, which mm. wasn't so precise. So I was thinking, which move is better for white here? Well, maybe just um, at first rook h3, maybe also to... Maybe. 
I'm not so sure. Then later King comes. Oh, but uh, not only because you, are uh, because you asked me, but Rook H6 looks like the absolutely the normal movement. Yeah, I was just thinking that, okay. Uh, if something here is possible, I'm not sure. Oh, but if you lose D6, then... I'm still thinking. <laughs> 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 I don't want to give up my pawn just like this. But why rook a6? Um, I would what, what to play? This one? I would go for rook d8. Keep mm. it in the game. And rook e6? Yeah, I know, it's a problem. <laughs> but knight f6 check. I know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to do. Yeah, but then again d6 is... It's falling and... And that's why I didn't want to protect this pawn, but look for something else. Some kind of counterplay. Mm, yeah, but the black position is terrible. Ah, I have an idea. And if you take a take with... No, I can't really take with the bishop. No. Hmm. Ah, it's... Mm. It is, it's anyway, even if the computer doesn't show it this way, but it's somehow a night king's Indian nightmare. The nightmare is an E4. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, this is I was trying really hard to find something for black, but unfortunately, no, I it's can't. Just the difference between the bishop and the knight is so big. <coughs> well, I think white will take some on d6 afterwards and it's huge, mm -hmm. huge advantage. Yeah. Okay, it looks like Nana will win and it's already move mm -hmm. 39. Mm -hmm. So let's have a look on other games. Okay, from yesterday. And what happened right here? H4. Check as we expected. And we have this position. Mm -hmm. So maybe King G3. Mm -hmm. And then this. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, King G4. Yeah, now some kind of threat of H5 check and then Knight F5. Maybe rook e1 to e4. Mm -hmm. Was also my idea. Was here? I don't know. Activating king, I'll just try. And now yeah, rook, rook e4. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I play h5 or immediately knight to f5. Or knight f5. On h5, you want to play knight h6 check. Or I mean, yeah. Okay, I think I go for h5. Mm -hmm. King h3. Okay, not for both sides. It's <coughs> difficult to make progress. Some kind of fortress now. It's a question whether black has got any threats. I don't see any threats. Ah, you're threatened to take in. Uh, sorry, ma maybe threatened to take in h4. No, but then the white pawns are too strong here. Okay, maybe b5 now, just to do something. Mm. Or to play with a moment, or maybe to play c4 check and then b3 then, instead of b5. Okay. Oh, 
Well, my feeling it's about equal. It's very difficult to make progress. Yes. Okay, but here we are already at move 40, so mm -hmm. players have a lot of time. Ah, oh, here it's more exciting. There's time pressure for both. Yeah, let's look at this one. It is very exciting. Let's quickly go to the we real have position. We and then rook f7. And take. Yeah, playing with fire, not to change the queens. <laughs> So now um, queen f3. That's what I would play in a blitz game for sure, queen f3. Just take a look. Yes, queen f3 happened. Oh yeah, because it protects this one and attacks this one. Just a question after white took in a f if white succeeds to take in a five if black gets enough counterplay, maybe black queen coming to g three or something like this, but also maybe rook g six now to trying to counter attack on the <coughs> on the g line when white takes an f five. Mm -hmm. Oh no, Dinara has to decide quickly. Yes, yeah, she played G6. G6, yeah. Probably white will take, and in the end, black has a counter attack with rook G3. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this can become very hot. Who knows who's winning here? <laughs> <laughs> and four moves left until a 40 move. Well, just to show, quickly show the idea before the next move is coming. The, uh, I think the idea is rook F5. Rook f5, rook f5, and rook g3 with Queen some counterplay. f1? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't want to go too long in the lines because, of course, it's exciting what's really happening. Well, objectively, it's roughly equal, but. Um, Both both players are now under extreme pressure. Look at how, how tense they look. Also, mm -hmm. I understand that also I would be trembling here because now any move can <coughs> also mean the um, immediate disaster and big decision for White to take in a five or not, take on in a five, giving black counterplay or retreating with the rook, keeping the tension. But then maybe the danger is that the uh, knight will be kicked out with b5 and maybe losing control a bit and c2 is hanging. I think I would take in a 5 then. Yeah, she didn't. She moved back with the rook. Uh, maybe to, yeah, to e2. e2. Ah, yeah. So just Ooh. to keep... Uh, <laughs> okay, but the engine didn't like the it. The engine doesn't like it at all. Yeah, I think white should take in b5. No. b5 now, b5, right? b5, yes. Boah. I don't want to face this position with white of not having so much time. But okay, already they move 38 now. Yeah, because a knight d2, which is the not natural square, she can take in c2. And otherwise there's no uh, really good square for the knight. So this is a problem. Mm -hmm. And then this black will mm -hmm. continue probably with bishop e5 somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But where to go with the knight? A3, but it looks very artificial. Mm -hmm. Then maybe Queen C5 and. I would have taken on F5. Yeah, of course. This <laughs> is unpleasant, this position. Mm -hmm. Yeah, also Dinara looks much more happy now. No? Yeah, and this is also easy to misplay it right now. <laughs> yeah, I think now I like black better, at least. Uh,
So still two moves to make, two absolutely crucial decisions and also what, what would you play now? Play knight d2 and sacrifice the queen side somehow? Or no, knight b2. If this is somehow mm -hmm. possible. Knight b2, yeah. But it's a very sad place for the knight. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's really <laughs> sad. That's why I wanted to <laughs> take on f5. Yeah, yeah, of course. b5 looks too dangerous for me. And she's moving to d2. d2. Yeah. Yeah, that's brave. Yeah, but now I would take on c2. Yeah, probably the idea is then to drum up some counterplay with the knight. I don't know, knight. Um, I also don't see exactly how, but maybe bring the knight to g3 or. Yeah, she took. Mm -hmm. That's interesting to see what's there. They also felt that knight d2 is probably the best move, but I don't know exactly how to prove it. Yeah, knight f1, that's what I thought. And then mm -hmm. bring the knight to g3 and uh, take a 5 with the knight, sacrificing the queen side. <laughs> <laughs> but if it doesn't work out, of course, then <laughs> sending a point to her opponent. Yeah. Also, the engine doesn't like it very much. Queen b3 and then probably knight g3 is the idea. Yeah. And would you take in B3? Yes, for sure. I mean, there are other options as well. You might just go with the queen to somewhere to the first rank, queen queen C1 or something. No, take this pawn. Or D1. I want to take this pawn. <laughs> yeah, D1 would be, D1 would be stupid, probably, because of rook takes a 5 Yeah, there. and then rook E8. Exactly. Yeah, I just wanted <laughs> to mention this. <laughs> But queen c1 also doesn't look too bad. And no, I take on b3. Of Go course. for it. Take Be it, take go. it. And... She took? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course, that's the principal move. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but now I really prefer black. Okay, but what do you do now after, uh, let's say, knight g3 then? Okay. Okay, black can check and then you can move the knight afterwards because I've made on g1, so it's... Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, some queen b1 and then b4 and... Queen b1? Example. And King H two, then maybe B four and mm -hmm. Yeah, because now if the knight maybe can show if the knight yes. takes on a five, then Queen G one Queen G one is made. This is bad news for White because I think this was the idea of counterplay here to activate the knight and um if the knight would land in f5 without this mating problem, then white has some serious counterplay. But here, I think the white king is too exposed to really do something. And then it might be that the black b pawn will be the decisive factor. Mm -hmm. But black immediately took on f5, which seems to be stronger. Oh, how does this work? Ah, okay, because rook f5, queen f5, then is this rook e8. Okay, it's red. Still, it looks very shaky for white. So most probably black should not take, uh, not change in f5, but uh, maybe I don't know what's about rook g8 now. Hinting that there are also threats against the white king. Mm -hmm. I like think this. It, I think it would be wrong to change rooks. Yes, I agree. I like black. Mm -hmm. You like black, Engine likes black, <laughs> Dinara likes black. <laughs> yeah, now there are just like bishop f8 and then with the idea rook g1 yeah. check, king h2, bishop d6. And Yeah, so now, now black is a pawn up and probably also mm -hmm. has a um, better king position. Yeah, this is why 
I was very surprised she didn't go for this move because mm -hmm. then it's the opposite. Now black is playing for the counter play mm -hmm. and, is and this is not easy. Yeah, rook g3 and I was thinking mm -hmm. about yeah, this one. Fun. Yeah, okay. And I don't know. Maybe can try for some kind of repetition with queen c6, c7, but I yeah. know, oh but then queen f4 oh. then. No, oh, stupid because <coughs> queen c7 now, rook f uh, queen f4, and then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Mm, it's not. No. But instead of queen c7, I still uh, sometimes have the idea to play b5. Not now, of course, but later. But yeah, but as you said, now it's white with a, uh, with a pawn up. Yeah, that's what I don't understand. So and the knight wasn't pushed back yet. Mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah, strange decision. No, I can't go. No, you Not can. really. Yeah, but then I don't want to exchange this bishop. Yeah. And oh, the strange decision not to take in, um, mm -hmm. not to take in a five. Yeah, and here the ancient says equal, but I find it very hard to prove this. Okay, so let's must just a s brief overlook of uh, the something of exciting. All the games, yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> we have Sansaya against Shongi. I hear we said it probably will end in a draw, but now after all these adventures. Yes, they exchanged everything. Mm -hmm. Interesting. H4. It's also very cool uh, to stand in this. Um <laughs> oh, how did this happen? I mean, so this was a bit quick for me now. Okay, sorry. It was very surprising what's so for me. So, took, 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 took. And now, black was activating the rook. But bishop takes c5 is quick. Uh, sorry, sorry. There's some moves that I never would play in my life. Play bishop e3 here or something like this. I don't know. Um. Okay, maybe rook d3 is unpleasant, but rook e1 then. Very strange. Okay. <laughs> but if it's draw, then why not go for this? Yeah, but uh, it's to, to go, but in, in this way. <laughs> 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 well, nothing can happen, right? Yeah, yeah, I know. But Just having my rook protected. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see anything. No, no, it's it's. <coughs> no, it's equal, but still, it's um, a <laughs> ugly look. <laughs> <laughs> Disturbs my sense for aesthetics. <laughs> from the white side. <laughs> so we can try to activate the king. A joke, yeah. With this idea. Yeah, I mean, also only black can win if something goes wrong for white. That's yeah, I'm thinking what to do now because black is threatening. Well, but even then, probably it's nothing special. But it's so unpleasant to have this um, this cover check hanging about you like this sort of Damocles. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally paralyzing the white forces. I mean, it's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but what would you no do? No, I mean, I, I believe that objectively it's still total draw, but I mean, <laughs> some if, me if you sacrifice this pawn. Yeah, anyway, black can take this pawn anyway, uh, any moment. Okay. I want to see. Take, wait. This can't work. I mean, now the black uh, pawn is just moving to mm -hmm. h3. Mm -hmm. Isn't this completely winning? Um, yeah, now it's winning. So I need to do something. But it shows that the white concept is extremely risky. I mean, I don't understand how a white could, why the white did allow this. Yeah. Yeah, now the threat is simply rook takes, let's yeah, say, Yeah, take and, and H2. then H2. Exactly. Yes. Now I have this threat here. Mm -hmm. And also bishop to on C7 would not defend against this. Yeah. So, white has to do something right here. I mean, bishop d8 is okay. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so I think immediately moving bishop d. Oh, no, no, no. Then oh, I'm losing bishop from, from mm -hmm. this side. Uh, no. Yeah, that's what I say. <laughs> you don't believe me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't believe you. <laughs> this is so unpleasant. Hmm. Oh, okay. This is bad luck. Because right at the moment we could have played this move if the rook was protected. Because then the rook can't give mm -hmm. check from both sides. But our rook wasn't protected. Maybe rook c5 to force the king to go to the wrong direction. Yeah, but only for a short time, right? Um, wait. Because now you're threatening to take the bishop. Mm -hmm. This was my idea. And then the rook. <laughs> huh. And if black plays, let's say king no. d6 or what? Then, then I can just take. This is winning, ah, but okay, I uh, think you have to play this move right now. Yeah, okay, but then already. Yeah, the okay, okay. Ah, oh, but this means that king f5 is not possible because mm -hmm. yeah. of rook c5. Mm -hmm. huh? At least, if not if you want to try to win here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at least we solved the problem. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a big problem because the bishop doesn't have mm -hmm. any square here on this diagonal, so it seems that this is mm -hmm. right. That's why only mm -hmm. king f6. Mm -hmm. But now white can just wait. I mean, let's say I just play bishop a c uh, a7, b6. And mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well now, now we can also play like this, right? Oh no, not here. <laughs> not here. <laughs> no, no, okay, just keep it and just wait. Let's wait. Bishop a7, b6, so maybe also rook. Uh, now I'm rook a3, not because then maybe the black king can come. Yeah, yeah. I Rather think we need to a7. wait with the rook here so that mm -hmm. we have rook c5 mm -hmm. as soon as the black king reaches the 5th. Yeah, the I can the just fifth wait rank. with bishop a7, b6. Yes. Yeah, this must be drawn, of course. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Then we have this humpy game, where unfortunately she missed this beautiful move. Mm -hmm. yeah. Rook h6. Yeah, this is really a pity. I'm very sorry she about that. She will be very upset when she finds it out. Yeah. And also, right before, she had like many nice ideas. Playing d5, for mm, example, so also completely winning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but what she played was even better. I mean, so it's. Mm -hmm. She played Giri's mm. idea. Mm -hmm. And okay, very sad. And she received this mm -hmm. endgame here, which looks very drawish. But let's have a look what happened. Not much happened. <laughs> <laughs> but it's interesting that we see so many end games like this mm -hmm. with rooks and then different colored bishops. Yeah, but they all ended in draws, no? Mm -hmm. <laughs> now sometimes this can be very interesting, but I think here it's nothing. Yeah. Okay, but it's very drawish, of course. Okay. So we need to move back. So game sorry here rook g6 and yeah we ended up being here taking on b3 she took and yeah, rook, rook g8. g8 yeah and now they are still yeah. thinking yeah, maybe this will become dinara's first um, first full point mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah but it's really crazy that white didn't take on f5 bef before him yeah no, a strange know. decision this was really a strange decision to move back and then suddenly have the b5 facing a very difficult position with only about mm. one minute on the clock. Okay, but let's look for some other still game, uh, games that yes, were interesting. Yes, yes, there is at least one very interesting game. 
das war mir. <lacht> 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 ah, das war mir das, das, ja, das, das, das mehr wissen, aber momentan muss ich ja. Seit der Dinara Game. Rook F5, H6, Take. The King's Indian Nightmare. Mm -hmm. And Bishop F4. But now yes. it's plus six, so there is some yeah, tactics. Looks, yeah, it looks like some mating net. Yeah, it does. This time we will find it. Rook e8, rook f7. I think so too. G8. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go for the obvious ah, line. Six, I don't know whether to go to yeah. g8. No, we G8. need to think. Ah, I think I see some ideas here. Let's see, rook g8 check. H5, no, probably it's the wrong direction. No, I think we yeah, have something better here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, here I don't yeah. really No, but see. let's go back, it's just too yeah. far. Yeah, so I think here is something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Also, the engine told to maybe rook g6 check, maybe mm -hmm. the mate is over here. Yeah. Just have to find something after King H7. Yeah. F7 would be nice, but then rook takes d6 then. Mm -hmm. And there are many mas nice moves to think about rook ff6 and still that in rook g6 check and and then to free the knight somehow, because if black has to change in, in e6 somehow, then white will take with the pawn in e6. Mm -hmm. And this will be totally crushing. So what's about rook ff6 then? Because at the moment black doesn't have really a threat here. Not bad, but maybe there's something better. Check. Yeah, I mean... Also good, but I want to find the best one. <laughs> <laughs> Veronica is so <laughs> ambitious, it's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it feels like a mating net, of course. But rook g6, king h7, I did not see them. Because always the stupid knight is hanging on. on mm -hmm. And rook e8, king g7. Then rook e7. Okay, but I think we have to show some action for our spectators. <laughs> <laughs> show some action, <laughs> they don't okay. They then. don't want to see us just thinking. Okay, okay. This, this is at least a good move, but not the best. Yeah, but don't trust this computer so much. Yeah, I don't trust it so much, but... I like this rook ff6 too. Yes, it's okay. I just didn't want to give Black any counter chance with taking. I know yeah. it, it's it's nothing, but still. I wanted to give a checkmate, you know? Yeah. Ah, by the way, what's about... Um, maybe it's too primitive. The knight takes b7, but it's... Um, 
Now with black, it does, uh, I want to force black to take an e6 because then the the e pawn would be very strong, but he can just retreat to e8. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it would be interesting. Yeah. Because the e pawn will be extremely strong. Or not e8. Yeah, I was thinking about this move. But then, can't we take here? Yeah, but it doesn't matter, no. It doesn't matter to you, yes, <laughs> but... <laughs> Maybe one. And just another check for fun. I just want to give the mate, so it's... Yeah, of course it's completely lost. Yeah, um, my basic idea is the black, um, I want to... Uh, to to um, activate the past pawn, and if black change in e6, then this pawn will be terrible. And otherwise, the d-pawn will be terrible. Yeah. Just one idea, I mean. Yes, I agree with you. But of course, it's in a game, it's a very difficult decision, what is that? I would go for this move. And... Yeah, I don't know. This is not working with rook e7, right? Then king g6. But here it's mate, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. I will find this mate here. Well okay, it's it wouldn't be so surprised if it's mate, but... Um, <laughs> well, I must admit it, for our excuse that after analyzing for several hours, <laughs> then finally you're somehow um, dumped a bit. But this is checkmate in three moves. I mean, come on. <laughs> yes. Come on, we find this. In three moves? Yeah. Engine says, made in three moves. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Then we're really totally dumped somehow. <laughs> no, no, don't say this. <laughs> mm -hmm. If we don't find mate in three, oh my god. <laughs> How can it be? I don't know. I don't see it. I know, rook e6, check now. Rook e6, rook f7, rook e8, it's very simple. Oh, in this direction. Now again in this direction, so this is a bit confusing because it's changing yeah, the direction. Yeah, this is confusing because we started mm. from e6. Yeah, exactly, so this is well <laughs> some psychological block. This is funny to start with check. Yeah, well, always mm -hmm. give a check. Hmm? <laughs> yeah. And then let's have a look what happens. Yeah, so oh, finally okay, yeah, we okay. found the line. I'm so happy. And so this means black has to black go down here. Yes. And of course, now this is a big progress for white. Yeah. Because now the knight is no more. Uh, I simply check, check, of course. And maybe now knight e8. Now knight e8. Okay. Hmm. Knight e8 is. Uh, threatens also made in two moves at least. Yeah, like rook g7, rook mm -hmm. f8. So probably black must play now rook g6 and or first take in c4, it doesn't matter. Okay, yes. Maybe now knight f6, check. Yeah, now we are killing. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't notice you, so you're so aggressive, I'm getting afraid sitting next to you. <laughs> so lady is a killer. King of, king of 8 must be played and... And now probably rook e7 goes somewhere. Maybe takes in b7. Yeah, just take. And now again a threat in mate in two. Mate in ten. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We found mm -hmm. it. I'm so happy. But we just saw in the video that one game has finished. And it's this game between Humpy and Jinna. So rook e4, take, take, and as we expected, mm -hmm. a draw. This is a dead draw, even though white is a pawn up. <coughs> but with bishops of different color, there's of course no chance to, mm -hmm. to do anything here. Yeah, very sorry for Humpy to miss this beautiful move, mm -hmm. rook h6. Yeah, really pity. Mm. Okay. Was well played, well prepared, everything's mm -hmm. great, and then just last shot, but unfortunately she missed it, mm -hmm. and yeah, then only draw. Sometimes this happens. So, what to expect from the game between Zanzaya and Shungi? Also, draw, I guess. Yeah, rook c5.
and rookie free. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so now black needs to move with mm -hmm. the rook. Well right? I can play rook g for check and take the h pawn one. Mm -hmm. Yes. Here. Here and take. Yeah, when the other hand now the white um, king is freed and. Can we just play this? Ah. Yeah, maybe <laughs> this is the. the and now black has to yeah. take yeah, yeah. and. Very precise I defense. Wait here Master forever. of defense. <laughs> Thank you. It seems that the chess book has helped me. <laughs> 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 Not yesterday, <laughs> but at least today. <laughs> anyway, it was nice to go through this chess defense book. It was really cool, but also really tough for my chess knowledge here. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we are expecting <laughs> a draw here. So, yeah. And then we have the game between yeah, Pranavali yeah, <coughs> and Dinara, probably. <coughs> Maybe the first the full point for Dinara. Yes. But the most seven. interesting game at the moment. And rookie seven. Okay. Still everything is possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm always waiting some motives on, on G1, rook G1 and some discover check and so on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would probably play something like Queen C two now. What does White do after Queen C two? Uh, maybe ah she wants ah and now I see what she wants to do. Look F F seven maybe then. No, my threat now after queen c2 is very serious threat. Um, I threaten to play bishop e5 or something like this. Then. I was threatened just to play the bishop somewhere and then and made a g1. I mean yeah, but I go for rook f2, f7. What, what do you play? Rook f7? Yeah, is this possible? Yes, possible, but uh, no. That's the second just idea. Just before. <laughs> ah, so that's <laughs> your real idea. Yeah, it's always good to have two ideas in mind. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Now I would think that black is totally winning, but your computer doesn't really agree. But it looks terrible for white now. Yes. I would also think this is mm. completely winning. And the computer thinks no, a slight advantage for black is interesting. But anyway, I think uh, from human point of perspective, what is the final position here? She played. I think absolutely white is on the verge of defeat in my my view. Yeah, and also the in the moment the, the engine also sees it like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but I think there must be something better than yeah. allowing rook to f7. No, but if Is the there anything? If you are queening the people, it's <laughs> 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 if you are queening the people, yeah, <laughs> then I'm also satisfied. I mean, also start with bishop f uh, no, not bishop f6, but um, bishop f8 is a move. Mm. What's, uh, what's after bishop f8? I ah, know, so it's also hanging. Mm. Analyzing too long now. Then here. I don't think this is working, yes. Well, it looks very logical to move the queen. Maybe mm -hmm. there's a better square than c2. I mean, maybe for some reason a2 is better, for example. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay. But moving the queen to the second rank and then both threatening a mating attack and on the other hand, um, queening the b pawn. Yeah, good idea. It's maybe queen a2 better, I don't know, for some reasons, but some more queen. No, it's not bad. Clear advantage. Better than c2. Mm -hmm. But well, hard to see why, but... Okay, then queen b2. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this is blocking the b-pawn. Yeah. It's kind of, kind of unlogical. Somehow a2 is better than c2. Hmm. 
Okay, but still very interesting. And there is one other interesting thing. Well, anyway, there. it must be said that uh, Dinara has big advantage and is, I think, yeah. very good practical chances to win this game and to make the first full point, which mm -hmm. would be very nice for Dinara. Yes. After so many unlucky losses. True. And here we have the game between Maria and Alexandra. Mm -hmm. and well, here we said it was rather drawish. Ah, oh, well, it's probably draw. Just put yeah, it yeah, yeah, yeah. to the middle of the I board. also think <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> I mean okay, so <laughs> this last move didn't happen, so don't mm -hmm. worry. <laughs> just a repetition. Yeah, it was repetition and then yeah, just put the kings into the center for the draw. Yeah, and it was a fair result. And again, Alexandra was absolutely at the verge of defeat if she had played against Veronica. She would have just lost a piece <laughs> for nothing. <laughs> Not sure. <laughs> and... Um, and even afterwards, she, uh, she thinks she had a very bad position, but somewhere in a miraculous way and extremely tough, as we have seen it in the last games, she rescued at least half a point mm. to keep her lead. Yeah, with the idea of playing f4, mm -hmm. this was the important point here. Yeah, I was hitting h3, maybe to show h3, exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. for example, I don't know what to move. Uh, yeah, taking, yeah. Then it's then just it's mate in one move. <coughs> yeah, this was creative defense and after King H2 to play. Yeah, okay, this is something why I should never allow such a this type of mm. counterplay. Yeah, of course she didn't if want to. Yeah, yeah, no, she what was your last move, move before F4? Before F4, it was this Bishop G5 we didn't understand mm -hmm. because here yeah, of the Rook D1 is just mm -hmm. winning. I mean, yeah, <laughs> that was the ah, interesting okay, part <laughs> where <laughs> we couldn't easy. figure it out. <laughs> okay, but this is it's... <laughs> <laughs> we were thinking about this and still yeah. couldn't fight to move forward. And now Bishop A4 was just of a strange logic because the idea being that, yeah. the, that black wants to um, give the exchange back. And here this, <laughs> this white bishop is stronger than the black rook. <laughs> this is the reason why we have to keep the bishop. Uh, this, this is completely crazy. Mm -hmm. And after knight E7, what was the point? Knight E7, mm -hmm. yeah. And now knight E5? Or yeah, it was mm -hmm. activating the knight. Completely mm. winning. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but it's really very strong for white. Yeah, it is. Queen is coming to c4 and knight d7 is threatening. And if black has to give now to give back the exchange, then probably mm -hmm. the position is crushing. But of course, this is really superhuman. Yeah, this is, this is not crazy. This bishop a4 here to change the diagonal. <laughs> 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 yeah, probably, um, she's of course, she intended rook d1, I'm sure. And then she didn't see a, um, mm -hmm. a follow up. Yeah. But I notice uh, if you don't see the follow up and then it get confused about the variations and play something else and then... Mm -hmm. Yeah, B4. B4 yes, was the move mm -hmm. here. Yes, this was the, the clean cut win. Mm -hmm. no, um, uh, not here, no sorry, no. this wrong position. Uh, it was here, sorry. Yeah, yeah, here. right here. Yeah, B4, very nice move. Yeah, and then <laughs> I guess that she would have won this game. Yes, I think maybe Black resigns here with us. Just losing Already the full piece. resigning? Mm, well, what do you do here? I don't know. Alexandra always keeps on fighting. <laughs> <laughs> I guess she would find something interesting. I don't think so because it's <coughs> she loses a piece for one pawn. Yeah. Uh, very sorry for Maria. Also sorry for you. I know how much you would <laughs> have loved to interview her. Yes. But maybe you will still get another chance. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and just have a quick look at this game, but this probably will also just finish right now. What's okay, the final position? Okay, but one? she played taking on b7, and we were discussing here this strong move, rook e8. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. With the and crazy the idea. Mm. Oh. And now to come back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is study like. <laughs> you can trick me. It's a funny staircase. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Okay, anyway, and here uh, in, the in the game, Knight taking on b7, okay, this is taking on c4, king b1, and this is, of course, still completely one for this white. I think this was the other idea that I proposed before. Yes, no? mm -hmm. you did. And yeah. I also thought it's a huge advantage, at least. Mm. Yeah, because no, either, either if black change on e6, then as I said, the e-pawn will be very strong, or otherwise the white d-pawn will be very strong. Mm -hmm. And this, this was the typical uh, King's Indian nightmare, so everybody who is um, King's Indian aficionado, just better take a look at such games before <laughs> <laughs> um, before you decide 
before you decide to work some months on the King's Indian defense <laughs> 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 and enjoy all the fantastic variations that, uh, um, <laughs> that the authors of King's Indian repertoires will show you. <laughs> 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 oh, and it seems that also another game just finished. Yeah, as we also expected. Sansai against mm. Shongi, it's a draw. Okay. After Rook E3, taking on B2. King comes closer, but now this king is not mm. caught anymore in the corner, and after King F3, yeah. what to do? Yeah, draw agreed. Mm -hmm. Shongi had good chances in the opening. We move back mm -hmm. somewhere here. Because Sansai, uh, I don't know, somehow spent yeah, a lot of time mm -hmm. with some, mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, this part, of this part of the game, uh, Sansaya didn't play well, but afterwards, when she was in a critical situation, yeah. then she showed very nice creative ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so here she was under pressure, but yeah, somehow she managed to get through it mm -hmm. with this nice idea later, taking here on h6, and mm -hmm. then it was very interesting. Yeah, then it's not so clear anymore. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a good time for a break. <laughs> Ah, break. Good idea. Before we <laughs> see the finish of mm -hmm. the rest of the games. Mm -hmm. Okay. See you soon again. Joined by Alexandra Kostiniuk here in the press center. Alexandra, a draw today, but a really tough one. No, give your, give us your opinion on on what happened today. 
Yeah, again, I somehow um, didn't do something right in the opening. I forgot what I had to do after C3. Of course, I analyzed it at home, but there are so many lines that you need to prepare. And somehow I didn't react correctly. I mean, her bishop b5, bishop a4, bishop c2 maneuver somehow uh, improved the position a lot. So I don't know what I had to do after c3. It's, of course, written down in my te I mean, textbooks, but um, time to, to do some homework again. And in the game, well, as I was told, I mm, was losing in one move, but it felt this way. It felt that the position is very shaky. I mean, um, I was not very happy about knight e3. I don't know. I still don't believe that queen of one... Uh, should be so strong. I don't know why. I should have some other options instead of knight e3 because somehow after knight e3 I went for this line that happened in the game and somehow well, I thought that after f5 I will be okay But apparently I'm not okay at all and um, a lot of pieces hanging mm -hmm. so I don't know what I had to do but it just I think I should have something after queen of one. It shouldn't be winning queen of one, but knight e3 is definitely it's very tempting, but it's a mistake. Obviously, the game was very complicated. Many different lines, many pieces on the board, which makes the decision more difficult. As we were talking before, there were a couple of key moments where your opponent, Maria, maybe could have achieved a, a, a possibly even a winning position. She missed them. You found a very good resource with f4, f3. What I'm seeing in the last games, um, Alexandra, is that you're fighting all the games, and even though you're coming out sometimes worse in the opening, you're still finding very aggressive moves. Does that say something to your form in the tournament? Well, I always play like this, but this uh, time I'm just lucky to score more points than I'm supposed to, according to the um, positions that I get out of the openings, definitely. But again, as I said, those tournaments, they can go either way. Sometimes you play well and you just don't score at all. That's true. Yeah, and, um, and that's happened to you in other tournaments as well. Right, right. Uh, and of course, now, right now, it's not the moment to analyze uh, what's going on. It, uh, I will have enough time after the tournament. And, well, for the moment, I just need to play uh, four more. It seems to me that in the middle game, you're very strong. You're finding resources, you're defending with precision in bad positions. Maybe uh, hard work in the opening could pay off in future tournaments. Maybe, but it's definitely not my favorite, my least favorite part, and probably that's why I'm suffering. And nowadays, it's uh, uh, it's a question of memory sometimes. And uh, when I mean, you do what you do, what you're capable of doing. And uh, again, we are going to analyze this and discuss it uh, after the tournament. But so for the moment, I'm doing what I'm. I'm just <laughs> able to. Also, do. there's four rounds left. You still have a healthy advantage over your opponents. None of your opponents seem to be also converting all their games. So I think the end of the tournament can be very interesting. And uh, thank you for coming and I wish you the best for the last games. Thank you.
Welcome back to the final moves <laughs> of the seventh round. Yeah, hi. I uh, hope uh, you see us again, <laughs> <laughs> to put it this way around. <laughs> so here a very interesting game, the, the final phase of the game between um, Harika against Dinara. And here, yeah, we expected here in this uh, sharp position a black queen move, but I expected the queen to go to c2 or a2 with the idea to free the um, b pawn and at the same time put up threat, uh, threats of herself. It must be noted now with the doubled, doubled. Um, ah, I think just this game finished here, so maybe one moment. First, take a look at the game. Uh, this already finished. Yeah. The game between mm -hmm. Nana and Alina oh just finished. the other finished. direction. Wait a moment. Yeah, this we left around here and white took in b7. Which it, it was possible to play even stronger, but we also discussed this move. Knight takes b7, that it's strong enough. Here now the black counter plays at, an, at a dead end and now um, White got an extremely strong e pawn, bringing the knight back. Oh yeah, no. Mm. <laughs> 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 oh, well oh well, nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the first victory mm -hmm. of today for Nana. Maybe and now this, this finished it. Probably there, okay. there was no <laughs> here to play rook e8 check and king d6, rook d8 check and picking up here the the rook. This is. Yeah, this was a nice positional game of um, of Nana, mm -hmm. showing the big drawbacks of the uh, King's Indian defense. If it's going badly, then you lose games like this. Yes, and I wanted to mention that Nana is now only one point behind Alexandra. Ah, yeah. So everything is mm -hmm. still possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, interesting. And I think now we should switch back to Dinara, because now um, there's already again time pressure looming up. Let's just go to the actual position. Ah. Okay, so it was rook e7 and then queen a3, which we didn't expect. And now only moving yeah, but to c1. But she one. lost one tempo, she instead of just because, just to like, uh, because in this position we expected some move like queen c2 and, um, and then push the b pawn. But um, for me, hard to understand, she played first queen a3. Now black cannot move the bishop because of rook h7 mate. So black must pin her hopes on the b-pawn, but now um, she lost the tempo. And she retreated with the queen, and of course now it's not so clear anymore. Hmm. Because now the white rook can get behind the pawn, and now um, it's really a pity. Hmm. This now looks like a draw. Well maybe now White can activate her knight. Knight g three f five. What do you think? Oh, I was thinking about taking the pawn. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes Veronica can be so materialistic. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for that. Okay, but, but I'm then scared. <laughs> if you take a pawn, I also take a pawn <laughs> and then have a pawn up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought of <laughs> cross playing all in knight g3 and knight f5 and mm -hmm. but okay I, I guess also of course also rook b4 is enough for a draw but then still still black is here pawn up and you never know of course the material is very much reduced but and maybe also black now has some strats with, on the, on the, with bishop e5. And mm -hmm. Yeah, and especially with the pawn. Yeah, but probably, yeah, because now I'm threatening to win the second pawn, and then maybe it's not so, it's more serious. Mm-hmm. While after knight g3, then, I don't know, b3, or would you play a rook? Not 100% sure, Maybe because you're threatening bishop, uh, knight f5. No, but maybe just take in d3, just not, not, not to be scared. 
because now if white plays knight f5, then probably we can play um, well check. something like mm -hmm. yeah, or maybe just so do what simply rook f rook f3. Ah, oh, okay, this also works. Because now after rook g7, knight g7, we can take the last pawn or or push the deep pawn. Maybe even black is better now. <laughs> yeah, even now is even mm -hmm. black better. So at least I mean <coughs> nothing. T so the Nara is not in danger, but the advantage is gone. Hmm. So how many games are still going? I think it's the last one. Just have a quick mm -hmm. look. We have a draw between Humpy and Chino draw between Zanzaya and Shungi. Then this game is still continuing. And we have a draw between Maria and Alexandra and also a draw between Anna and Elisabeth. And the only victory from the day is from Nana against mm -hmm. Alina. Yeah. So this is the okay, last game. So let's return to the only game that's still going. But it was a very interesting fighting game here of um of Dinara. She only has one minute left oh on okay. the clock. Is the question whether Harika will still try something? Yeah. So I guess she will go for knight g3. Yeah, of course. Rook, rook takes b4 definitely is not <coughs> a winning attempt. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else? I think there's only knight g3, right? Yeah, knight g3 or rook b4. It's yes. Yeah, I guess knight g3 and then probably knight h5. Maybe this is the only try. Yeah. Rook d3. Just no, knight analyzed. h5 maybe. And knight h5 instead of. Uh, okay. No, the engine doesn't like it, but my feeling would be that's still enough for a draw. Probably rook h3 takes h4 and then I want it. Ah, okay, and then I cannot. Ah, okay, now rook h3. Okay, g2, rook takes h4. <coughs> yeah, it is. And now. Mm. This is a bit risky for white. Yeah. I prefer knight to f5, also protecting ah, the yeah. h pawn. Ah, this was all. I just want to look the alternatives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this should be enough for a draw. And now we said rook f3 and then... Yes. What should white do now? Well, we thought... Um, there's also the idea to play knight takes h6. So there's still some tactical ideas. Mm -hmm. Probably rook takes f7. Yes, taking on f7. Knight takes f7, check. Knight takes. King h7. And now we can take the pawn in b4 and it's probably drawn. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah, probably this is a logical drawing variation. Mm. But she took the pawn on b4. Oh, okay. Like here immediately. Mm hmm. And Dinara is taking on d3. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it should be also enough for a draw because. Yeah, Dinara has to watch her time, only one minute left, but of course still the 30 seconds increment. And took back to mm -hmm. yeah. the seventh rank. Yeah, and here's the moment when black can take a second pawn on h4. <coughs> but then black, uh, of course, is very passive, is two pawns up, but I think. No real winning chances. Mm -hmm. But she's going for it. Oh, maybe Harika has found some devilish trap, but I don't see it. <laughs> 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 yeah, I think just the point being that black is so passive because the, the bishop can't move. King G2 and taking on H4. Yeah, 
Well, not G3, what else? Mm. Yeah, it's an interesting position. Black is <coughs> black is two pawns up, but uh, but the bishop can move because rook h7 mate. This rook move uh, rook can move because the bishop is attacked. And white intends now to play king f3 and then knight f5. And it's so active that I think even with two pawns down, there's no real danger. Mm -hmm. Both players look still very tense. Well, understandable, for, um, of course, for Dinara with very little time. This is always a situation when you absolutely have to be alerted and any moment be ready to react. So your body is full of adrenaline. <laughs> yeah, not too free yeah, of course. Rook G4. Mm -hmm. Yes, came instantly. Yeah, now for sure king f3 will come. Mm -hmm. And then rook to g5? Or yeah, I think rook. Yes. And then maybe knight f5. And oh, but then maybe rook f8. Yeah, but if the d-pawn is falling, the h-pawn will not win anymore. Yeah. So what I would I mean, mm. king f3, rook g5, and now let's say knight f5. Now black can go rook f8. Um, but maybe there's even something better, but I can just here and take on d4. And then of course this h pawn doesn't win for black. Yeah. So let's look at the yeah, king f3 is played. Yeah, hard to see good alternatives to rook g5. I mean, I mean maybe rook g6, but... Mm. Yeah, somebody says that Alexandra has nine lives at least. <laughs> 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 yeah, this is absolutely... <laughs> 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 but why exactly nine? Because she's a cat, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, by logical deduction, <laughs> because the only living being that I know that has uh, got nine lives is uh, our cats. So <laughs> <laughs> okay, it seems she can't decide between uh, rook g5 and rook mm -hmm. g6. Yes, rook g5. Rook g5, yeah. So now the five looks very logical, no? Yes, for sure. I mean, you can also play moves like rook bd7 or so, but anyway, black can play rook f8. Yeah. And reach this ending where black has still h pawn left. Mm -hmm. But then but I'd rather go for uh, rook bt7, then mm. already my knight is well played on oh, g3. Maybe with black you can still hope the knight bear, a nightmare of any commentator to reach in the end rook and bishop against rook ending. <laughs> 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 Sitting here for some more two, hour, two hours <laughs> more. <laughs> Did you have this end game, someone? Yeah, I said it twice. Right, one one did the um, defending side against some international master, I think, and, and some European team championship. Then I drew, and one side in the stronger side against the German grandmaster, and then I won it. So it's you won it. 
Yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah because my opponent didn't know any theory about it. It was funny because we started out in a relatively uh, unfavorable position for me, the stronger side. But uh, my opponent knew neither the neither the Cochrane defense nor did he know the defense of the second rank, and so I won within 15 moves out of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he was lucky, but he was just. Um, mm. But in practice, I think uh, even in tournament games, about 50 percent are won. I think of the rook and bishop against rook. Okay. And what's absolutely fascinating about this ending is how well Filido analyzed it. Filido was such a such a brilliant uh, genius player in the 18th century, who was also a, a double talent, also a great opera composer. And he said about him that he was um, so much superior um, compared with his compatriots, that he was um, like 100 years ahead of his chess understanding. Mm. <laughs> and he analyzed his endings, which are even for grandmasters nowadays, to find a full w um, winning sequence from out of a typical position is very difficult. It's some 15 only moves with complicated zug swings and so uh, I find it always very difficult to reconstruct it, even though I saw it several times. And Filidor analyzed it to perfection. Mm -hmm. Everything was absolutely perfect according to modern computer analysis. Interesting. Absolutely brilliant, man. Yeah. Oh, D3, D3 happened. happened. So I guess rook bd7 maybe. What else? Well, one might rook think BD7, about, king yes. about king e3, one might think, because the king is out of the pin then. Mm -hmm. Why did she but go for d3? Because she has no other moves, or <laughs> what? We expected rook f8, but. Um, yeah, that's weird. Oh, but after king e3, maybe rook d8. No, I would play rook to d7. Anyway, I wanted to play rook to d7 instead of knight to f5. Mm -hmm. Ah, Nana is coming for interview. Yeah, so right now we will have a short break because we will see a very nice interview with Nana. You want Kinder in sozialen Brennpunkten haben es besonders schwer. Sie müssen oft sowohl mit sprachlichen als auch häuslichen Problemen kämpfen. Wenn vielen von ihnen keine erfolgreiche schulische Karriere gelingt und sie später beruflich abgehängt sind, wird das zu einem großen gesellschaftlichen Problem und birgt enorme Gefahren für uns alle. Wir glauben, dass unser Schachtraining nach allen Erfahrungen der letzten 15 Jahre mit bis zu 10.000 geförderten Grundschulkindern ein wunderbares und innovatives Mittel ist, um hier gegen zu steuern. Unser Königsplan für Kinder fördert auf spielerische Weise. Die Kinder lernen, sich besser zu konzentrieren, sie werden kreativer und sie erleben, wie man vielfältige Probleme flexibel löst. All dies ist kein theoretischer Stoff, sondern wirkt sich unmittelbar positiv auf die schulische Entwicklung aus. 
Vor allem zeigen wir diesen Kindern, dass wir an sie glauben und geben damit den Glauben an sich selbst. Und das ist die allerwichtigste Gabe für ihre weitere Entwicklung. Um all dies fortzusetzen, benötigen wir Ihre Unterstützung. Mit 150 Euro können Sie ein Grundschulkind über ein ganzes Jahr hinweg fördern. Unsere Personalkosten werden von unserem Stiftungsgründer Roman Kohlig getragen, sodass Ihre Spende voll und ganz in diese wichtigen Projekte fließt. Dafür im Namen der Münchner Schachstiftung und natürlich unserer Schachkinder ein ganz großes Dankeschön an Sie. Okay. So, are we online already? I guess we are online. Yeah. Okay, so hi, congratulations Nana, very nice game Thank for you. the positional um, textbooks for yeah. King's Indian Killers. King <laughs> yeah, King's Indian, because Alina usually plays so many openings, she plays like Nimzo, I don't know. Benoni, King's Indian. So, but I was um, I was prepared on on King's Indian. So, I wanted to surprise her because usually I don't play this line. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so this all typical. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here I I already because uh, I should uh, I think here I should already decide where to castle mm -hmm. king side or queen side so after this move I have decided already to uh, castle queen side mm -hmm. yeah, the king's first yeah, yeah and to uh, to develop attack on the king side mm -hmm. and uh, yeah so if f5 actually I didn't expect f5 here because after e takes f5, he takes f a long castle, I think uh, I have clear advantage here. Yeah, I like very much. This is, uh, this is not a standard uh, reaction, this e, f, and um, But and I think, attention. yeah, decisive uh, mistake was here, uh, here, I think, because... Yeah, rook a6. I thought after g5, uh, I'm winning already, yeah, yeah. because the queen mm -hmm. is trapped somehow, and it's uh, not at all easy to find the move for black here. Actually, I was thinking about e4 yeah. here. Yeah, we thought black must But play. I thought f4 yeah, exactly and, f4. and mm -hmm. queen g3 mm -hmm. and I don't know, knight d1, I mm -hmm. was thinking mm -hmm. during the game. Something like this. And um, if she goes like queen g2, bishop f2, I think, with the idea knight e3. But also rook fg1, no? Uh, rook f uh, ah, sorry, it's hanging. Ah, sorry, it's hanging. Sorry. Ah, sorry. Yeah, yeah bishop f2. Uh, so. Uh, Actually, I think what she has done here, it was the best in the position, mm -hmm. what uh, black could do. So, but strategically, it's very sad. yeah, it's for <laughs> black, it's really very sad. Yeah, this is the King's Indian but nightmare. I don't know, I'm not sure, was this queen exchange uh, the best, uh, uh, best possible uh, move which I had? I don't know, I'm not sure. But I like, during the game, I like this position for me. So, yeah, this all quite good. Uh, and, uh, uh, yeah, yeah very nice maybe I, I, um, I, I think that I should have something precise than what I have done, because... Um, oh, but afterwards, I think there was a quicker win, but... I but don't this know. This was still, I think, very strong. This was strong. I. I think so. But I don't know. During the game, I thought I gave some chances to Black. I could. Um, I could do it better. I think. But I think it's always huge advantage. Huge, ad yeah. And uh, what I was thinking actually. Here, bishop. And I think now rook e8 check and rook e7 uh, check. I was, t uh, yeah, I, I had this rook e8, mm -hmm. uh, king g7, rook, rook e7. Rook e7 mm -hmm. Yeah, if she goes like king yeah, g6, there is this mate. Yeah, mate. yeah. <laughs> this I saw during the game, but 
she ha she has uh, king g8 here uh, and i don't know i think now knight knight e8 i think is very strong knight e8 I that's so. i missed mm. this i missed I, I i didn't see this with the idea rook g7 but yeah, if okay. she like takes here and go goes like uh, rook g6 how do i win just knight f6 check knight f6 oh and then king f8 and rook takes b7 and i think this totally rook takes b7 or d6 or oh, d6 maybe even better yeah, d6 d6 and stronger, the yeah. mate mm. i guess yeah, oh knight this threat idea is mate, is i missed I absolutely missed this night. Well, but what you played is also totally I amazing. had a feeling, actually, that mm -hmm. there must be something, mm -hmm. some kind of mate uh, ideas, mating ideas, but I don't know. Um, during the game, I couldn't find it, any of them. Yeah, but, but this here is also Yeah, this is also... Actually, I didn't expect that uh, evaluation was such <laughs> But anyway, this is not very reliable. This is it's, it's a bit hysteric. It's always too much. <laughs> <laughs> uh. But I think this is... Anyway, this is winning. It. Yeah, but I think this was, uh, this was a really nice idea. Yeah, not six and mm -hmm. G5. Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, yeah, congratulations. Very nice game for the, for the anti-King's Indian textbook. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm also very satisfied with my games today. Yeah, very good. And so you're somehow in reach of Alexandra now, the, the only one. Yeah, the we ha still have, a, I think, one point difference. One point. But yes. still four rounds to go. Mm, so. Yeah, so anything can happen. Yeah. <laughs> so good luck. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>while also the last game finished after d3 white just took on g7 and then d2 white played rook to d7 and now everything got exchanged and of course this is not really yeah. an interesting yeah. <laughs> end game <laughs> yeah <laughs> so congratulations to dinara for the next draw mm -hmm. 
And yeah, it was a very interesting mm -hmm. game. Yeah. yeah, fighting game. And Dinara clearly showed that she can hold her own against very strong opponents. And she just I think she has to improve her time management a bit. Mm -hmm. And then I think she can play absolutely at this level of this um, of the top uh, top women. Yes. So let's have a look at the results from today. There was only one victory. We saw a draw between Harika and Dinara, draw between Zanzaya and Shungi, draw between Maria and Alexandra, draw between Anna and Elisabeth, and the nice victory from Nana against Alina, and also we had a draw between Hampi and Jinnah. What was your most favorite game today? Well, uh, the game of Hampi was a bit tragic because she played a great attacking game um, based on a, on a new concept of Anish Giri and had just a chance to um, uh, just to initiate a direct mating attack out of a well, so she had a, an attack already, but just it was not easy to find and uh, she did not spot the critical move, rook h6. Um, you can check it yourself. Um, <laughs> and uh, this is really a pity because this would have been also for the textbooks. Yeah. And also it was a bit lucky again for Alexandra, the lady with at least nine lives as one of the <laughs> 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 um, one of our spectators uh, put it, um, because again, she was she in this case she was clearly lost with one move that also that Veronica spotted. Um, she would have lost just a piece for nearly nothing, and it was totally lost position. And even afterwards, it was critical. But again, she succeeded to survive and showed her great resistance, uh, um, defensive power, and um, succeeded to draw. But on the other hand, Nana today, uh, we just analyzed or discussed it together. She played a very nice positional textbook game, how to beat the King's Indian. And so she's now with one point distance. She's the only one who is in reach of the, of the leading um, Alexandra Kostenyuk. Yeah, so a bit unlucky for Humpy because if she would have won, then she would be have also <coughs> only mm -hmm. one point yeah. behind Alexandra, same as Nana. Yeah, so now it's one and a half points, not so easy. But still, everything is possible. There are some rounds left. So what to expect from tomorrow? Tomorrow is already the eighth round of this tournament. And we will see. Tinara will fight against China. Alina will fight against Hampi. Elisabeth will fight against Nana. Alexandra will fight against Anna. Shungi will fight against Maria. And Harika will fight against Sanzaya. Yeah, so there are exciting um, matches ahead. I hope very much you see us tomorrow. <laughs> Usually it's the other way around, but um <laughs> <laughs> but um, we are happy if you join us and if you like our uh, commentary and wish you a nice evening, night, or depending from where you look, maybe a good start into the day. Gute Nacht, Los München. <laughs> bye, bye. Bye.